boom, boom. Oh, that's a little programming was there. We are live. Okay, folks. Uh oh, is that me? That's me. Mute my Twitch. I think we got our. Oh, we lost him. He ran off. He got scared already. <laughs> He's coming back. <laughs> I think he's getting a beer. That's right. You know, it's beer time over there. It's eight o'clock. So. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We have to be quiet. Little one. All right. Well, we've got uh, our first edition, uh, episode zero one of our British invasion of Lost Mines of Fandelver call ourselves here we have our north american tour on friday night that's the the north american the americans and the canucks the canadians and so we decided we were lucky to find a group guinea pigs deck them to my gameplay on sundays little do they know but they're all the way over on the side of the ocean of the atlantic or the pond I think sometimes is the word to use. And I may throw out those terms to y'all and y'all can just, you know, grimace. I apologize. So, you know, if I don't use the word right or so I try to act, you know, as y'all start talking, I'll start picking up on some of those terms. Maybe I don't, you know, this is my first group of uh, um, British or those are Europeans. Any, but, you know, sorts of I've usually just had uh, Americans or some Canadians on the stream. But I'm looking forward to this to get some education from the British side. So, it's gonna be bloody beautiful. There you go, or bollocks. Is that something you know? I heard. <laughs> yep, that's it. I already know this is gonna be sad on my part. Oh my gosh. Okay, well here we go. So I want to welcome the four of you to Praetor's Rejects and our Sunday edition. Like I said, of Lost Minds of Fandover. We run this module a uh, minimum of a couple of times a year. Now it looks like we're running it back to back, and, but it is a great module. It is the intro module that came with 5e when they released it, uh, and it is well written. It takes you up from one to fifth level, roughly, depending on how you play out. In this instance, we are doing, we'll be playing via my, milestones. So what that means is it's by accomplishments and doing things and, uh, not in particular order, but accomplishing certain tasks. It's not just a hack, hack and slash, uh, or being murder hobos, because the D and D has two different ways to they could play it. Now you can play with the milestones of making accomplishments, or it's by XP and by killing things and doing things. You get the XP, and after you get a certain amount of XP, you level up. I've have started to over the, the start off the channel that way, but now my games are slowly moving to the milestone. I think it makes for a more exciting gameplay because it's going to invoke the RP that you're going to have to do with your character to find out things. Just hacking and slashing can accomplish it, but what if you weren't supposed to kill that character and he had his pertinent, you know, some important information that you're supposed to get out of him somehow, or something was supposed to happen with something, you know, with somebody, and you went ahead and butchered them because you didn't like them. Uh, makes more work on me because now I've got to twist the story around and figure out a way to get that clue to you. Um, but, um, a lot of, um, uh, I've just become more of a fan of the milestones. So that being said, we have four players. We have, we normally, when we start off the session, I will go down the list here and ask you to introduce yourself. Uh, tell, you know, um, if you have something on social media or something that you present yourself uh, outside of the character, you're feel free to use that. If not, you can just introduce yourself as your character and tell us a little bit about who you are, you know, what your character is, what you're playing, uh, and anything else that's on your mind. So we'll start off with the ladies first and Damakos, and she's got a full mouth of beer. Um, <laughs> there you go. Introduce yourself to everybody, please. Am I saying my real name as well? You could. It's whatever you're comfortable with introducing yourself while you're as the viewers are watching the stream. So it's up to you. I usually like to tell people who you are and then tell here's who I'm playing. That's it. You can just use your first name too if you want. So. Okay, so I'm Lauren. My character is Demacos, um, and he is a tiefling sorcerer. Purple haired, tiefling sorcerer. Purple, purple hair. I've got right. red. My character's got purple. Trust me, we sent it back to me, and it was purple. Was it ever? Woohoo! Yes. 
All right, next is Delg. Uh, so, I'm Jack, and I'm playing Delg, who's a Dwarven warrior. No, Dwarven fighter, sorry. And he's gladiator as well. Okay. Next up is Dwee. Uh, my name's Rich, and I'm playing Dwee, or Dweebus, but everyone calls me Dwee. I'm a, a young halfling, youngish, 24, um, and I'm just uh, kind of just getting into the whole uh, rogue side of things, so I'm quite, quite an impressionable young halfling. There you go. All right. And last but not least, Alaria. I'm Alice. I'm playing Alaria, who is a uh, high elf druid, um, but she was raised by wood elves. Okay. All right, so like I said, we have they're all newbies to uh, the game and to this lovely interface of Fantasy Ground. So we're going to cover a little bit of that to start off with before we get into our gameplay uh, and let you just kind of experience. We we're, we got them all set up this week. Last week had a few technical issues, but got those all knocked out, and they're just they're dying to literally die. So with that being said, so what you have in front of you, uh, I'll just explain is uh, you'll see on the left hand side, you've got your chat window and you're noticing that's where you're going to look at when you make rolls and things happen. That window will show you on the left hand side what's going on in gameplay. Um, up above that, you have your character portraits. That's everybody listed there. If you need to see something, as, as you're using Fantasy Grounds, you'll have multiple windows open and real estate kind of gets a little cluttered. If for some reason you can't find your character sheet, you just double click on your portrait and it will open it up for you. Bring it right to the top there so you can see everything on your character sheet. Real quick way to get to it. Okay. Uh, down below, you have your dice. Uh, and sometimes I may ask you to grab certain ones and throw them in there for me. And when we do that, you just actually click and hold the mouse uh, and you can drag that dice. If I ask you to roll me two D6s, you right mouse click on the D6, grab the two symbol, and then drop it in chat. Just like that. If I ask for advantage or disadvantage on a roll, uh, that is the advantage and disadvantage button, just the left two of the dice. If you want, if I say give me an advantage roll, you click the advantage button, you grab your D20, and you throw it. And you'll see that the higher of the two will turn green, and that will show you what your roll is. Boom. Same thing with disadvantage. It just turns the dice red, takes the lower of the two. You're learning. There you go. That's the dice roll. So what we got stuck on is the icons over to the far left. Let's, I mean, to the far right. Sorry. So I want to kind of go over those in detail with you. Um, the main thing I need to, for certain, we need to check on is, that, is the bottom right-hand corner, you've got your library. If you'll, if you'll click that and turn that on for me, click in go into that for a second. We're going to be looking at the little uh, icons that are up above the books, the little bitty banners. I need to make sure you'll have some of them turned on for me. And this means if it's turned on, it means it has a little check mark next to it. We want to make sure that you have on the notes, uh, NPCs, images. That's going to be it. PC, notes, images, NPCs, and if you have a story, if not, can't remember if y'all will see that. The rest of them you don't have to need to turn on. If you've got items or spells or parcels or uh, backgrounds, you could turn those off. The main thing, the really ones you're going to have access to are the images and maps and the notes. I want to make sure those show up, and that means you turn it on, and the big icon will show up with that name on it. Okay, that's about the only time you'll get into library. Uh, unless something crashes, then it closes the books, and we'll, we'll go through that and reopen it back up. You should all see, just to the left of the library, you see the little dice icon, the little dice tower, little rook-looking creature. That is, that is a DM throw tower. So basically, I might ask you to make me a stealth check in the tower. So what do you do? You would go to your character sheet. You would go to the skills tab. You're going to see a bunch of skills along the you know listed there. You go down to where it says stealth, and over on the far right hand column where it may have a little plus number, you grab that whole square and drag the dice. You'll see a dice pop up after you come off, and you drop it into the tower. 
You don't get to see the roll, though. It's for me to know. Uh, you might say, well, I'm going to try to sneak around this corner and look at something. Well, I'm going to say, give me a stealth roll in the tower. You don't know if you're stealthy or not, but I'm going to know. And those creatures that you might be trying to sneak around may or may not see you. Uh, so you do, sometimes those roles are hidden. We do that a lot with uh, stealth and perception checks when you're trying to look for something and you don't know if it's really there or not. I'll ask for a perception check in the tower. So that's what the dice tower's for. Um, up above, let's talk about the little bitty icons. So one of the ones you'll have open a lot is the cross swords one. That is the combat tracker. You click on that, you're going to see a box pop up. It's going to have all y'all in there, listed in there. This is how we track combat. When I ask for an initiative roll, which we'll cover in combat, we're going to do a little combat here in a second, you're going to, it'll put you all in order. Plus, the bad guys will also be in order. And we'll start at the top, and we start working our way down, one at a time, to do your actions, your attacks, and any bonus things. And then when you're done, you pass your turn to the next person. And this is how it tracks it all. So this kind of lets you know where we are in the turn order when things are going down in combat. Close the, you can keep it closed. If it takes up screen, you click the X. It goes away. You need to get back to it again. Just double click on the swords. Boom. It shows back up. I like to have it open. I usually like to drag the box over and kind of lay it on top of the chat window about halfway. You don't need to see all of the chat. You only usually see about the last four or five lines down there. And so sometimes I like to grab the combat tracker and kind of push it over there so that it's laying on top of the chat window a little bit just to save you some room. You'll find your way on this, which one works for you. Um, the icon to the right of that is called the party sheet, the little symbol with three people next to it. You're going to open that up. And you're going to see a couple of tabs. But basically, it's going to show you the first tab is the main party tab. It's basically showing you all some ba major stats, kind of who everybody is, you know, a little bit about y'all. Um, we'll show you some indicators, which would, if you don't have the combat tracker up, kind of what your health is at, things like, you know, you'll notice these fluctuate and you can look at them from time to time. Um, there'll also be an inventory tab. This is where you will see when y'all start finding stuff, I put it in the inventory tab and y'all can determine who gets what. Let's say you find a few chests and there's some potions in them. The potions will be sitting here. Well, I want one of those potions. Well, you're going to, I'll show you how to drag it out of the inventory tab and drop it onto your inventory in your character sheet. But this is where the stuff is found for the party to share. Sometimes you might find something and say, oh, I want it for myself. Okay, well, then I'll drag and drop it on your character sheet for you appropriately. But this is where you will find all the kind of stuff that y'all have. And when you want to sell stuff, we'll go over that. We'll go over that when it happens. But you want to use the party sheet. You want to kind of look at that from time to time to see what's going on. The only other one is the order tab uh, that you'll see. This is when we're not on a map or we're doing something. Uh, you're walking down a hallway of something that we're just doing some theater of the mind. Uh, what's up, Loco? Good to see you. Um, I may put you, I may ask for y'all to a particular order. How are y'all marching along? And y'all, what we do is I put everybody's token and I say, okay, y'all are headed north. You're headed this way down a hallway. Who's in front? Who's in the middle? Who's in the back? And y'all would position y'all selves. You know, let's say I've got a hallway here and yeah, exactly. You just move your icon. Let's say I've got a hallway and I draw and at the mind my here's a hallway. Who's in front? Who's in the middle? Who's in the back? In between those two lines. Okay. We'll have maps for most everything. So you won't be as subjected to my hideous drawing because I'm not an artist by no means. So <clears throat> we'll go in that from time to time. All right. We can close that out. Um, the color palette. There's a little color palette over there. This is where you can make your, you're going to, if you notice on your character sheet, uh, on your portraits, there's a little black dot. Everybody's got black dice right now. You can change the color of your dice here. You want some pretty colors? Okay, make some make some colors. Make And we usually like to have everybody have their own colors because when you start rolling, you'll see that they show up in the chat that way and you, and you see them down below. And when you start drawing on maps and all that, the color that you're selected, that will be associated with the lines and the squares and stuff you draw. So everybody kind of wants to have their own color. And a lot of times people will, you know, you'll be rolling really crappy for a while and you'll hear that old term, it's time to change your, your dice color, you change your dice. This is how you do it. No, it really doesn't you know, have any issue in virtual tabletop game, but people still like to change their dice from time to time. Pretty stuff. Um, 
So we have a plus minus symbol down the bottom of there is modifiers. From time to time, I may ask you to go in here and click one of these for particular modifiers if someone's got cover, or if you're granted a critical hit from someone in the, is the viewers. You, know, you don't remember, we have viewer interaction that will go on during the game, and sometimes y'all will be granted advantage on an attack or granted on a, uh, a critical hit. This is basically just like the advantage, disadvantage buttons on the bottom left-hand corner of Fantasy Grounds. These are the same things. You click on something. If I say someone's got, you know, cover you click on the cover that you could click on the cover button roll some dice and it's going to it makes some modifications to the dice roll for you so you don't have to remember what that is that's all the modifiers are for um and the last but not least the one you use a lot is the little single man zombie creature it's called effects i'll start drag a lot of over here but this is basically a lot here's the, where fantasy grounds really shines this is the automation these are things that you don't have to remember I'll remember for them, or I've already got it coded in your in your character sheet about how to do things. Um, <clears throat> but if you're frightened, I will. If, you know, I drag what these effects get drawn over and dragged onto you in the combat tracker. So this is why the combat tracker has to be open a lot, um, because you'll see effects and things happening to your character sheets. Oh, you got a free gift. I see. This is where the the group. Now, one second, I don't have anybody who's probably watching right now of my mods. So I have to give Murderous a chest. Murderous, you wanted a chest, I'll give you a chest. What is he talking about? Mur. Did you link? Yeah, oh, there, I misspelled it. Oops. Murderous B. There it is. Boom. There you go. You got a chest. Um, so. Let's t so you're like going, what's he talking about when the effects and all that? So if y'all open up your character sheet for me, you're going to go to your actions tab. <clears throat> like for all y'all to have that open up and down the very bottom, I want the mode to say standard. You just click on that box until it changes it to, to the mode, it says standard. And what you're basically seeing is the kind of stuff that you all have to be able to use in game. Uh, your, your weapons are at the top. You will see that you have then abilities and racial traits, things that you, uh, who you are, what you can use while we're playing will be listed here and we'll cover them here. Then if you all have spells, you'll see them listed here uh, that you have picked. And then you've got some supplies down the bottom. This is how we track a few things in game. Um, if I say, you know, y'all are, you know, you did some, you did some camping for in the night and you're all done. And I say, well, you need to check off a use of rations. You would just go down to your rations and you put a little check mark on the first little circle. That means you've used one of your ration supplies. Okay. And that's how you use it. Okay. Uh, same thing with the weapons up above. Let's say, you know, y'all are making an attack and you, all of you should have a, oh my gosh, I didn't give. Two of y'all daggers. Here, take uh -oh. this inspirational card. <laughs> Who gets a Damakos gets inspiration card? Okay, we'll do that in a second here. You know, see, you're already y'all are already getting stuff in chat. People are already sending. So if you're gonna get an inspiration card here in a second, damn, I'll, I'll tell you what that means. Um, but I need to give each of uh, one second. Normally, all of you would have been given a dagger, and I did not do that. So let me. Okay. So, each of y'all should have a dagger now in your character sheet. Basically, you want to make a dagger attack. <clears throat> You're trying to understand what the symbols mean. If it's got a simple, if you look at the, you got the name and then there's a hand sitting there. The hand means it's one-handed, so you could, you're actually, you know, how you're carrying it. Some of the times, you know, as you level up, y'all might be a dual weapon fighter. And so you have to make sure that it's a single hand next to the weapon. Uh, like in Damico's case, you've got uh, our short bow. Uh, two of y'all have bows, you know, crossbow, short bow. You'll see that it's a two-handed weapon. So that means you can't be, you know, you, it's the only thing you can carry when you're fighting. You can't be using a short bow and stabbing somebody else with a dagger. It doesn't work that way. That's what the hand symbol means. And then the next little icon next to it is whether it's a sword or it's got a arrow, bow and arrow, or bomb symbol. That means it can be thrown. That's what that's. It's a it's a ranged attack. That's the difference between the two. Some of your weapons have ranged abilities on them. <clears throat> they can be both. 
So then the next two boxes are the attack die <clears throat> and then the damage. So if you're attacking somebody, and uh, we'll show you how to, you know, to make it a combat attack, you basically, the first box, the little, the die with the plus, you know, the number in it, you basically double click that and that's the attack roll. And you'll see it happen in the chat window. Now you'll have, now what will happen when you have a creature targeted, it will show you then whether that was a hit or not. If it was a hit, then you grab the second column, which is the damage, and you do and you apply the damage to the creature. Boom. And it will get take off hit points for the creature you're fighting. That's how that boils down. That's weapon. One That's how my, Go ahead. One of my hand axes says one's handheld and one's thrown. Can I Yeah, hand axes can, can be thrown. Handheld? Yeah, you so oh. you could yeah, you can throw them. But so, and you'll see down below. Now, if, if you have a ranged weapon, it has ammo next to it. When you throw it, that ammo gets checked off. And you have to pay attention. So, if you chunk your hand, both, you got two hand axes and you chunk them both, and then you walk up to somebody while well, I'm swinging with my hand axe, I'm going to clob them in the head. Well, no, so sorry, because you've thrown them already. Yeah, exactly. You don't have them in your hand. Now, that also means that if you don't go pick them up after combat's over with and y'all move on to the next scene, you'd lost your hand axes. You have to remember to go pick them up. Okay? If you're if y'all have shooting bows and crossbows, I will you'll say, "Well, I want to go get my arrows back." I will sometimes say, "Go pick them up, no problem." Other times I will say, "I want you to give me a roll because some of them may be damaged and you won't get them all back depending on the fight." I says I have no ammo for my crossbow. Yeah, you do. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, where you, uh, thought I put a quiver. Don't you have a one second? Yeah. Okay. Here, that needs to be changed to twenty. All right. We have one dagger. I didn't put it in. That's my bad. So sorry. Now you do. You have twenty sitting there now. Okay. When you fire, you'll notice a little check mark goes off. Okay. And this is how you track your ammo. Plain and simple. That's how that boils down. All right. Uh, let's talk about abilities uh, and your traits and all that. Y'all, some of y'all, if you two of y'all have a spellcasters, you'll see your spell slots. We'll talk. We'll talk about what those mean here in a second when y'all cast spells and how you check those off. But the next bit, y'all will have some of the. You'll see a few boxes that will say class abilities or racial abilities, stuff like ra racial traits. This is ba these are basically the things that you get when you chose your character or your class or your race and all that. And some of them will have a next, you, you see a lot of your stuff there has a little magnifying glass next to it, next to the ability. When you click on that, that's showing you what there's something else that goes along with this ability, such as in with the Dell, you have a second wind. Well, if you want to know what second wind is, you click on the sh I, the shield icon. It tells you what second wind is. You're basically it's a bonus action from time you know during combat. You can heal yourself, basically gain some hit points. But once you use it, it's going to disappear until you do a long you know and do you do a rest. Some of y'all have a traits like uh, Elaria has Fey ancestry. This is an effect that I need to drag over and put on you in the combat tracker. And it basically, it's a reminder that you have this ability that's always on. You can't be charmed. You have, well, you have advantage on saving throws of being charmed. So I need to know it's always on. Uh, Delg has a racial ability called Dwarven Resilience. That needs to be on him. So I'll pull that over there. And it's always on you in the combat tracker. So it shows, and, and Fantasy Grounds will take into effect some of these roles other times it's just for me to reminder to make sure that we know that if I'm going to charm you, that you've got advantage, you know, and I'll tell you to turn it on. Um, so that's what the magnifying glass means. We need to kind of be familiar. Like Damakos, you've got a racial ability called Hellish Resistance. So I need to, that needs to be dragged and dropped and put it on you in the combat tracker. And now it knows from now on, if anything tries to set you on fire, you resist the damage. You'd only take half. Um, Dwee, you have something called like uh, naturally stealthy. You can naturally hide. Uh, you've got you're brave. You got advantage saves on being frightened. Um, y'all just kind of need to make sure y'all understand what your characters, all these abilities are, uh, and what they mean. 
Okay. And these are, some of them will be on, some of them won't be on all the time because they're just for you to know and remind me, you know, well, Hey, I'm, I'm brave. And so you're trying to frighten me Some zombies came up and they naturally can frighten me. Well, I get to have advantage on that save. Okay. I'll tell you to turn advantage on and I'll throw the save on you and it'll tell me what happened. Um, Dwee, something like you, uh, you have sneak attack. What that means is that when you get the sneak attack ability, if you get if you get the hit and you're able to use your sneak attack, you have to drag that effect on you in the combat tracker before you do the damage roll because it's going to give you that extra damage along with your normal weapons damage for the sneak attack. But you only put it on you, you only drag that effect over on the combat after you've made a hit. You don't do it before. Okay, we'll go over. I don't expect y'all to remember all this, you know, right off the gate. We'll over time, a few sessions, it'll make it'll start making more sense. Um, for then, real quick, we'll cover the spells. Though you'll have spells, you can scroll down and you'll see them listed here. And if there are saves, attacks, and all of them, if you see a magnifying glass, click on the magnifying glass. It, it expands it open and it shows you some of the roles that are associated with your spell. Some may have an attack roll. Some may have a save. Some and then some have the damage. And we will talk about. I will tell you. Here's how you do this roll uh, when you're wanting to cast that spell. Now, those that have cantrips, cantrips don't cost you a spell slot. So you can you can use as an action fire off a cantrip all the, all you want. It doesn't cost you anything. It's still an action, but it doesn't cost you a spell slot. Once you start casting first level spells or higher. Once you cast that spell, you have to go up to the spell slot and check it off. You have to track your spell usage. So if Delaria cast a first level spell, cure wounds, and goes and cures Dell because he got his he got his butt hit, handed to him and he got you know got hit a couple of times, well, so you have to know that I cast cure wounds on him. I've cast it. You give him the save. You give him the the heal. Then you go up to your spell slot and you just click off the first level spell. You've used one of them. As soon as I grant you a rest long rest in a camping lot, it'll turn those off and it'll give them back to you so that you know you have abilities to use them again. Thanks, Loco. Let's get into something here. Let's put this to action, which I think is a little bit better so y'all can close out your character sheets for a moment. So what we're going to do is going to introduce you y'all all. We're going to semi-start the game here a little bit and put y'all into character so you can start thinking about this. So, Oh, well, we have to have our background music first. What am I thinking? Music. Um, we'll just go to simple. Where's my dungeon? dungeon. Here we go. Okay. So all four of you have, for some rhyme or reason, made your way to the grand city of Waterdeep. You have decided to the adventuring life for whatever form or fashion has called you and you're um, wanting to make a name for yourself or possibly blend in with an adventuring group and disappear. Don't know what the reason is. Only you do. Um, but like I said, you were in Waterdeep <clears throat> and you have been searching for work for quite some time now uh, and have been unsuccessful. Um, but, uh, your luck has changed before one day as, uh, you were making your way through town or sulking over a stiff drink, um, inspiration. Oh, I got inspiration cards for Damico Sindel. Yeah, I'll get them. I'll get them a second here. Um, <clears throat> when we start the actual adventure, um, you are approached by a gentleman, um, who asks that his benefactor by the name of Praetor of Waterdeep would like to speak with you. He is in search of certain individuals that, of your type for a task at hand. Uh, and he says he's willing to pay if you would just um, give uh, Praetor a bit of your time. You got nothing better to do, so what the hell? You're, you, need, you need to change the luck, change of scenery before you. And so you, you follow him through Waterdeep. And not for four long, not being not really f familiar with Waterdeep, it's, you know, you get fairly lost quickly in the back alleys and roadways of the city. Uh, and he comes into a cul-de-sac area where there's a little nondescript house, two, you know, a couple story house, uh, set in the back of the street area and you walk in and he takes you up a set of stairs to where y'all all find each other as y'all come in sitting at a table, 
Uh, and at the other end of the room um, is a man um, behind a desk, nondescript, wearing some fine, some nice clothing, but nothing pomp of circumstance associated with him. And he does introduce himself as the uh, man that you're uh, looking for, Praetor of Waterdeep. And he has had his eye on you for some time now, though you did not know it. Um, he uh, watches um, those who enter the city um, looking for adventure. He has uh, individuals out and about that look and listen for this type of uh, these type of people who possibly need work uh, and are unsuccessful. Um, and, you know, maybe for being a reject for something a little off for each of every one of you, you know, he kind of knows that, you know, you might fit in well with what he's planning. And he lays out the task before you is that he and his, um, he has some, uh, some of his underlings, not underlings, those who work for him, they run something called Praetor's Haberdashery Consortium. And it's a group of individuals that, uh, they own some shops down out to outside the dock areas, uh, and um, they um, uh, are very good at hearing, you know, the the heartbeat of the city and what's going on. And they got wind of a dwarf by the name of Gundren Rockseeker, who had come through the area to get some plots, some supplies in the uh, in the name of the area for the town where he's headed back to called Fandolin. Um, the area. Uh, off the Tribor Trail, and it's an area north of Waterdeep, um, has been, uh, there's two things happening. One is that lots of supply runs that have been happening that are coming out of the Desrin Valley uh, down the Tribor Trail to the High Road. And the High Road, let me show you a map here, what we're talking about. I'm going to give you y'all's first map. How about that? Um, which one do I want to give y'all? Um... Oh, that's this one. The big boy, but I really... Oh, here it comes. <clears throat> I think I might have shown some of you all this. All right. Big map. Everybody should have it. And you'll see... Now, to make sure I explain you how to use a map. So you got a window. You can grab the map and box, and you can move it around. If you want to ex grab the move, the, you know, expand the box size, the bottom right-hand corner is a little bit in the corner symbol. You can click and hold that box, and that will make your window the size of it move around. If you want to move around inside the map, if it's a big map, you grab the little cross symbol, the little compass symbol. You click on it and hold your button, click, your, click and hold, and then move your mouse. And you'll see then that you move around inside the map. And what we're wanting to do is move along the coastline up to Waterdeep. And you're going to be looking at a trail that goes up north. The main road that goes up through Waterdeep. And... My map... Actually, this. how about we show this one instead? This one's a little bit smaller. Okay. This one might be a little bit easier to manage <laughs> than the big one. Okay. And this is the, this is an area. You're given this map. Uh, and he shows you basically you're traveling along the high road, which travels along the coastal, the west coast of the Sword Coast region. And you're going to be going up to the Tribor Trail, which is right here. From there, uh oh, Delg's having a problem with the map. You can you can ask me questions. You can stop me in the middle of stuff. Uh, I got no problem with the map. The the second one you sent me doesn't have uh water deep or anything. Like no, that. it's a smaller it's version. Like smaller version of it. Fine. Yeah, no, it's it's not. I just I give you the version and telling you you're basically traveling. You this is this map is north of Waterdeep, showing you where you're going. Okay. And he basically tells you, he's telling you, you're going to be traveling along the road. You're going to go up the high road until you get to the Tribor Trail, which is here. And then you're going to be making a hard, right, hard easterly turn to head toward 
uh, up the Tribor Trail and then toward the town of Phandalin. <clears throat> but this whole area here, for some time now, uh, has been subjected to several caravan raids uh, and some of Prater supplies, several other supplies known from some of his competitors, the Lion Shield Coster, uh, and a few others have been lost. And his uh, a name of man of Barthen Provisions House, he's been he's made an order, uh, and Gundren has uh, she was chatting as the order was being fulfilled down in the district area where the haberdashery is located at, um, was talking with another man named Sildar, a uh, human gentleman, a little bit older, and they were kind of company together, and they um, were getting the supplies, and were going to be headed out the next morning to um, head back toward Phandalin. And that would not be just normal. You know, caravans get raided all the time. Um, but Gundren uh, started talking about that he needs to get these supplies back to his brothers because they need to get into the cave area. They have found, they've got a map to a, <clears throat> a cave area located up in the Sword Mountain areas that um, they believe um, is there's a treasure, some type of mat heavy, big, large, you know, some a long lost magical item is there <clears throat> that rumor says uh, is located in the Wave Echo Cave, and the dwarves believe they have found it. <coughs> and Prater wants to know what this is. Um, as it sounds, you know, if it's been long lost for, you know, a period of time, there is usually a good reason for it to be lost, or it should stay lost, you know. And he wants y'all to take another supply, uh, a wagon full of supplies, up to the Barth and Provision House in Fandolin, and ingratiate your basically get to know the locals, find out what's going on with two things. One is the caravan raids and get that resolved so trade can get open back up in the area. And second, all is find out what the brothers. One moment as the channel pauses in recognition for the presence of King Bashman in chat. We humbly bow before you. Like clockwork, folks. Like clockwork. Um, um, but he wants you to find out what the dwarves are up to and find this weapon, find this magical item, whatever it is, and get it back to him as soon as possible. He's got to send if the dwarves know about it and the way that Gundren's talking about it, then there could very well be others looking for it too. And he would rather it be in their hands in water deep than everybody else's. There you go. Thanks, Murders B. He can only chat with emotes now for the next hour. Ah, actually, it's just five minutes. So, um, he will pay handsomely for this. He's got 500 gold pieces on the line for the group. If y'all can accomplish this, um, take the supplies up to Fandlin. Check out what's going on figure out what's causing the, you know, the caravans to resolve that issue. And then also find out what's going on with the brothers, the rock seeker brothers and get this magic item, get it loaded in, get it to him as quickly as possible for that. You know, he's going to, he outfits you with a little bit more, you know, y'all have got some healing potions he's given you. He's going to, you know, he's going to give you money. Um, when you resolve this deal, but, you know, he doesn't want you, you know, basically you're undercover. And so he wants you to make sure, you know, um, do what's right, do what's best, but figure out what's happening in the area. Anybody got any questions for him? I could play crickets right now, folks. <laughs> do you accept? So it's, it's, Gund it's Gundren that is going to be our employer then, yeah? No, no, no. You, you're you following Gundren. He's basically, he's going to get y'all supplies and y'all are going to, Gundren's headed out. And so y'all are to head down to the haberdashery, get a supply full of, uh, a wagon full of supplies that you're to take under the, as a cover to Barthen's Provision House in Fandolin. Okay. Now and then while y'all are there, find out all that's going on and use your common sense to resolve these issues that he's put before you. Okay. Sounds scary, doesn't it? Yes. 
No, you're adventurers. This is what you're signed up for. This is your first big job. You're a reject now. So here's, and so I think I explained it to y'all last time and, and I always tell everybody in the chat. So I'm looking, so the rejects are basically, um, they have to put up with Praetor a lot. Um, and sometimes they do things they don't like. Um, but I'm not looking for you to make, you know, um, I'm not looking for the knight in shining armor that, you know, vanquishes all the dead, you know, all the monsters and rescues the, you know, the damsel in stress or in some cases, you know, the prince in distress, um, whatever it may be. Um, you know, I'm looking for, he, he, uh, you know, he knows that you'll have some flaws and he has a way of searching those out. And he's basically, you know, y'all are looking for some form or fashion to make a name for yourself, but, or escape who knows what that is, but y'all have come under his view, his, um, purview now. And yeah, that's right. Heaven help him. <laughs> um, but I'm not looking for, you're going to make mistakes. That's what I'm looking for. You know, I'm not looking, you, you know, you don't, you're not going to do things right all the time. That's how that works. Okay. And don't be upset about it. That the work will work it into the game and your flaws are going to come into play. The way you play your character um, will get you what we call inspiration. So all of you should, so right now you all have one point of inspiration. That is the upper right hand corner of your character sheet on every page. You see a little box that says INSP. That needs to have a check mark. That turns on your inspiration. It's kind of backwards, but and it puts a star next to your name. Each one of you turn that check mark on. You get a point of inspiration to use anytime during the game if you want to re-roll something. So let's say you're attacking something and you miss and you say, well, I'd like to use inspiration to re-roll that attack. You may. You can check that inspiration off and use it again. Well, these will be given to you in during the game is what was happening here. But I'll also reward that from time to time based on your gameplay of how you're RPing your character. And that's what's going on with the backgrounds, the ideals and all that, your, your alignment and these flaws that I'm asking for you to kind of put into play because they may affect your choices, may or may not. But it just, it's just something extra that you're carrying, extra baggage that you're carrying around because we all have, you know, skeletons in our closet. But make sure, so a Damakos and Alaria, make sure you turn that inspiration on. Little check mark should be, is it, yeah, it should be on. Should be, yeah, it should be checked. And then when you use it, you check it off. It's it, it's a little reverse how everything else works in Fantasy Grounds, but bear with it. So you all have inspiration right now. So, um, yeah, the yeah, the cards are cooled down for you boys. Subject, the, subject this crew. But what we have... First, we got to get some inspiration cards. I think we were given one, two, um, hold on, let me come over here. Redemptions. We had inspiration card. Mo Loco, you gave one for Delg and one for Damakos. Okay. So here's how this works. So we'll do Damakos first. You're going to get inspiration cards. So what I need you to do is roll me a D20. You're loco. You just want to give each. Okay, we'll give each. That's fine, loco. We'll enter. We'll we'll break them in slowly to the game, not like last Friday nights who almost TPK'd themselves, and almost ended the session in session two of Lost Minds. We were oh so close to that one. All right, so you rolled me a D. So Damakos, grab me a D twenty, and throw it in. Oh, did you really, Jeff? Did you just give him a magic item? Oh my gosh. Okay, um, Damakos got a 15, so you got a silver card. So what I need to do is I'm going to, Doug, I'm going to send you, no, Damakos, I'm sending you this table. A table should have popped up. You're going to click the little dice button at the top. Okay, quietude. What did you get? Use this card, and I'll send it to everybody so you see it. So use this card during a long rest. You will not be disturbed. During the long rest, you and your allies gain 3D temporary hit points. What? Holy smacks. Yeah, Damakos. You and your allies gain 3D4 temporary hit points until their next short rest. Wow. Okay, so let me put this in notes. So y'all are going to... I'm really good at that. Yeah, so this is really helpful. So uh, there, over on your right-hand side, you have a big banner that says notes. 
want y'all to understand and use this. This is where you keep notes about what's going on during game. Y'all, this is where you take notes, do your homework. And I'm going to put an item in here that's going to say inspiration cards. And I'm going to put this here. And and I'm going to put Damico. So I want you to be able to remember that you have these here. And I can share this with y'all now. And each one of y'all should see that there's the there's a there's a sheet here. You click on the shield and it shows inspiration cards. If y'all want to take notes, you basically can right mouse click in there, say create new item, and you can write yourself, you can write notes. You can keep, you know, track of who you're talking to, clues that are given to you, things like that. It's going to be up to y'all to remember these things. If you forget them, oops. So we want you, and if you want to share it with people, if you look in the upper right hand corner, there's a little check mark that says public. You can click that check mark and that will share it with everybody. So everybody can see the notes that you're taking. If you don't share it with it, only you can see it and I can see it. Okay. But I'm going to track your inspiration cards there. So that was Damakos. Now Delg. Same thing for you. I need you to roll me a D20. Okay, so you got a two. So that's a bronze right. card. Damn okay. It. All right, so you're going to roll off of this table. Table popped up. You're going to go to the very top of it, and you're going to click that roll dice. Am I waiting for something to pop up? Didn't I just send you a, um, hold on. Then the box just pop up. Okay. The very top is a roll button. Just click that yeah. dice. Upper left. There you go. Freedom. All right. What did we get here? We got use this card when you're immobilized, restrained or slowed. You never, oh, wow. You no longer suffer the conditions. So basically you can fire that in when something's got you restrained and you're no longer restrained. So let me put that. Y'all could go in and remember these. You got to remember these cards. You, you know, go and look in your inspiration card in the notes from time to time, and they will be there for you to use. And I'll try to remember too, that you've got them. Okay. So we've got two cards. Oh, we're going to go ahead. Oh, Loco wanted it because Loco has been with Chan. He wants to give one to everybody. So let's, we'll do that. They're newbies. They have to put up with me for the next few months. It's sad. Um, oh, so, cheers, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, this will happen a lot. And so this is part of the this is part of the game. Now, don't the thing I'm gonna give. Oh, I'm, oh, you gave a free chest. Alaria got a free chest. What? I thought you gave her a magic. I saw a magic item. Roll a two for what? What is, what's he happen for me? Free chest for, oh, oh, your sister. Oh, because, well, Laurie is, uh, she's a, she's a high elf. I thought, which, Jeff, you were talking about, you're a dwarf, are you? I forget. He's, he's, uh, we'll give her a chest later because he has to get, she has to actually link, they're new, they have to link their Twitch accounts, if they even have Twitch accounts, to stream, stream loots. We'll go over that toward the end. Um. Oh, um, um, Murders did that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Murders. I thought it was from Jeff. Okay, I got you. So, yeah, from one Lost Minds high elf to the other, I got what you're doing. Okay, we'll cover that at the end then. That's fine, Murder. I got you. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and do the cards real quick because we're going to want to get them into combat. I want to have them to see how this plays out. Um, Dwee, need you to roll me a d20, please. Ooh, Nice. So you got a gold card. So here, we I'm going to um, give you this table. Should pop up, upper left hand corner. Hit the roll button where the dice is at. Enough is enough. Make a saving throw with advantage for all effects on you that a save can end. Your next attack has advantage. Oh my god. We haven't nice. gotten to... Yeah, it's nice. Here, let me show that to everybody. I'll Mate, we're killing this already. Right. Are we just completely OP now? We're winning! No, oh, you're gonna, you're, yeah, well, you keep believing so. You keep believing that. Good. 
Trust me, the we are gods. Yeah, you're gods. These are just little things that help you. This is you know add-ons to the game. Okay, and I think Alaria, you're next. You're last, I believe. So if you'll roll me a d20 in the chat. Okay, that's a bronze card. That's fine. You're going to put the table pops up, and y'all can close the table when you're done. And you're going to roll that dice in the upper left-hand corner where it says roll. You're going to click on that and shake it off. What does it say? You may end one of the following conditions. Fright and paralyze. Okay, yeah. So this is basically very nice. All right. And I'm going to put shake it off in. Now, all of y'all, to make sure you all can see under the, if you open up the notes uh, banner on the right-hand side of Fancy Grounds, you all should see the inspiration card entry, correct? Correct. Okay, make sure that you click on that and y'all can see everybody's cards are there. The cards there next to your name. Okay? So they'll stay there until you use them. And you can have more than one, but you can only use one at a time. Okay? You can't you can't stock you can stockpile a few, but you can't like multiple use one in combat. If you're doing something you use one or another, but you can't stack them together. So, all right. So you'll have some nice inspiration already from the gods above that are shining down upon, and a, and a now a magic item. Who did you give this to, Jeffrey? What are you? He's. What is he doing to me? Magic item. Who did you give that to? For Delg, roll a two for why? Roll a two for Delg. What do you want? He gets a magic item. Already? Oh my gosh. Oh Come yeah, on. let's do this. <laughs> yeah, I've already given him healing potions. He he's he he beats me down. So that's all right. Nope. Jeff runs going to be running Thursday night sessions of Yawning Portal for the Thursday boys starting May what May sixth. Jeff, when are we doing? When did we start you off? May seventh. All right, so here we go. Um, the seventh. I got it. I got it. I'm not. I'm not stupid, man. All right. I'm going to give you magic item, boy. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do. Um. This is for Delg, right? Did I say that right, Delg? Okay, so Delg, what you're going to do is you're going to, the D10 dice down the bottom, it's the middle one. You're going to right mouse click on, or left middle. You're going to right mouse click on that. You're going to see a percentage symbol on the dice. Grab that percentage symbol and throw it in the chat. That's called a percentile roll. You got a 13. You got another potion of healing. All right. I'm okay with that. Yep. So I'm going to go to your inventory, and then where it says Potion of Healing, we're going to change that to two. Okay. Stocked up on Potions of Healing. Now, so we've got those rolls out of the way, except for the chest. We'll do that later. I'll show them after Whoa, we're done. Advantage. Oh, who's got advantage now? Okay, thanks, Jeff. I, he gave me advantage, guys. So, yes, yeah, y'all may get stuff too, but the DN gets stuff every now and then also. So I get advantage. Um, so Prater's gonna Prater's gonna assume that you all accepted this challenge, this task before you, and he uh, adjourns the group um, to the uh, dining room area where you're given fe a feast of the ages. You know, wine, water, mead, whatever it is that you know you may want to. That. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Whatever you may see, eat, want to eat and drink. Um, to I'm a filthy up. eater, so I yeah. like just okay. make a total mess. Well, that's all right. They are they are ready here to serve you because you know you're going to wake up bright and shiny in the morning before the sun's up, and head toward the haberdashery to get the supply wagon uh, and a couple horses, and off you go. And y'all eat your eat your eat your heart out, eat your contentment. And I really enjoy getting drunk as well. So I'm going to have a lot of wine. You, you can do that too. We um, yeah, have no it. problem with that. Um, and. Oh, that map's way too big. Um, here. All right. And. Y'all, 
groggily wake up, you find yourself, you're not, sh you know, you, you, you turn in for the night and all that. And somehow, some way y'all wake up and you're going to find yourselves. Second. Show you something. Send you a map. Let me lay a grid down on this. I thought I'd already done this like an idiot, but I didn't. All right. Here we are. One, two, three, four. So you find yourselves all of a sudden, you're not sure how you got here, but you are in a, in the part of, you know, you were in city street somewhere in the back alley area. And before you, um, a couple of stalls and bins, there is a little platform up above Looks like it's an auction platform someone would stand on, you know, to um, perform an auction house, things like that. And it is deathly quiet, except for begin to see. Um, that's not what I want. Hold on. Andre Dean, there we go. Well, I thought I had it in here. I'm going to sing the Doom song now. Oh my God, doom. you did not. Doom, 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 doom. Doom, da doom. Doom, da doom, da doom. Doom, da doom. <laughs> Me. Doom, doom, da doom. Do doom, doom. Doom, 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 I'll explain in a second what this is. Doom, 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 the end. It's a, it's a no from me. Oh my God. What was that? We, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. And we hadn't had that played yet. So and, you know. the, the haberdashery is run by four NPCs that will make, a, I think I may have said something to y'all last week about it and all that, but that is Zeke, um, scale singer. Um, we have three other ones that you'll slowly meet that he sings a song. It's called the doom song. They will make appearances throughout the game from time to time. They trade and sell stuff, and though they do run the haberdashery in Waterdeep, they you know are known to make you know automatic appearance and something that y'all are at as they travel the lands, looking for things. Um, and we're in the middle of getting them all redeveloped and uh, portraits done for them and all that because we're going to be um, doing some uh, shirts and merchandise with them, and they're going to start you know having their own voices on the channel and all that and <laughs> so we hadn't played that when that was that was hilarious i had to say okay so let me good call there jeff three all righty the issue is y'all are sitting here um and you begin to hear um look not only behind you but in front of you and also to your sides. What have we got here in our midst? You see some men just kind of pull out of the darkness and they don't look very friendly. They've got you surrounded. They basically are telling you, uh oh, yeah, we don't sell hats. I know we don't sell hats. That's the haberdashery. Does not sell hats. Um, they're basically saying just you wandered into the wrong place at the wrong time, little ones. Drop your weapons, drop your goods, and maybe we'll let you live. And then you look and another one starts there's another kind of a laugh. Where the hell is the Big boy. Sorry, I had these all laid out and it didn't save them on the map. Let's just put them. Um, Alright. Um, one more. No, that's not what I want. Sorry, folks. I am stuck here. Bandit. There he is. 
and you look and there is another individual that is kind of pulls himself up for the back wall and he kind of pulls out and he's looking and he's the one that's really talking and he's looking at y'all and he says, you wandered in the wrong alley at the wrong time. Drop your weapons, leave your stuff and maybe we'll let you live. We all feel a bit like badgers are us at the moment because uh, we've been drinking through the night and we've just woken up and uh, we, we don't want to be here right now. So why don't you just let us get... They all draw oh, their got... swords. All right, guys, I got a stonking hangover and I just can't be bothered with this. <laughs> are we all West Country? I'm offended that they call me Little. <laughs> Can I can I hide? You're standing right there in the middle there. Like, you're I'm you're surrounded by them. You can hide don't underneath someone's hide. legs, maybe, I guess. I don't know. The if anyone's wants, hiding, it's me. Yeah, the, the captain looks again. Look they look a little lost, boys. Maybe they need some education. Or er, what exactly do you want from us? Drop your weapons, drop your goods, and maybe we'll let <laughs> you live. Is dropping my, my money or my trousers? <laughs> that would be your good everything that you own. We'll let you live. We'll let you leave with your skivvies on. I don't like the sound of that. We do. Nah. <laughs> Look at them shivering like little peacocks. Shivering. How'd they even get this? We're far not going life? anywhere. We Shall don't we even know who we are. Though? You're a bunch of miscreants. You stepped in the wrong alley at the wrong time of night. Now you you're going to pay the, the price. You stepped in the wrong alley at the wrong time of night. Ooh, they, they go, ooh. Are you going to, like, manhandle a child now? Because I'm, I'm quite young. You know? Which one's that? Who's speaking? Dwee. Dwee. So this bandit over here to your right, bandit six, Let's they see if I can. Yeah, he basically people. he lowers his cross. He basically reaches around, grabs his crossbow, and fires it at you, and it hits you square in the shoulder. Now that wasn't very nice. And Dwee now has. Oh. That's what we're gonna do, little one. If you'd have been a little bit taller, I'd have hit you in the nads, and you wouldn't be singing anymore, would you? Except in a high tune. Y'all may roll me initiative. Uh, so, how do we do that? So, you open up your character sheet. You go to the main tab. In the middle, square in the middle, is a button that says I and IT. Just double-click that dice once. That will roll you initiative. And you will now see in the combat tracker that we start getting an order. And I will roll for my people. All right, so we need Dwee and Alaria. There goes, all right, okay. There you go. So now we start off combat and we're at the top of the order and it's Dwee. You are the fastest. You're also the one that's seriously hurt right now. You've got eight, hit, you've got eight wounds to your 10. So the number goes up. So you have eight. If you hit 10, you die. You basically, you start your death throws. You don't immediately die out, but you you were in the process. You're not looking good, there, Dwee. What would you want to do? I think I'll fire right back at the guy with the crossbow. Okay. So what do you do? All right. So first thing you're going to do, the person that you want to target, you hold your control key down, and you click double click on that token on the map. And when you control click, you'll notice in the combat tracker. It'll show you that you have them targeted now. You can also, yeah, no, not yourself. Control click on the creature that you want to attack. So, con yeah, now control click on yourself once because you've got yourself targeted. So we don't. There Let's you not go. Make this any worse? It's okay. No, this is why we're. This is why we do this. Just so you learn how combat, how the map plays, and how the map interacts with stuff. Okay. So now you have them targeted. Okay. Now. You're going to you're wanting to shoot with your cross with your short bow. Now, do you know what your distance is for your short bow? Uh, not right now. I'll, okay. I'll, find it. I'll show you. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to go over to your actions tab on your character sheet. Okay. The first thing you're going to make sure and do is change your mode down to, to combat because that, um, let me change it back. Change your mode to combat. This is showing you're going into combat now. So this is basically going to show you what you have actions to, what's going on with you while you're in combat. And then if you want to make sure that you're in distance and you are, but let's say it was a longer shot and you want to know what's going on, you can hit the shield next to your short bow. It gives you a description and it will give you a range number. That range means that anything up to your, basically your range for a short bow is 80 and 320. So what it's basically telling you is that anything inside 80 feet you can shoot with perfectly. If it's between 80 and 320 or 81 and 320, you would be doing a disadvantage. And <clears throat> you go, well, okay, well, that says 80. Well, how do I know how far I've, I am to him? So you've targeted him. If you put your cursor back over you and hover, it'll give you a distance readout on the map. And it shows you're only 20 feet from him. So you're perfectly within range. Yeah. Okay. So now you've got him targeted. So you go to your short bow on your actions tab, you click on the first die, the plus five, you double click that die just once. There you go. Okay. So you've given him the dance. You've given him the hit. You hit him. Now your sneak attack doesn't work in this because it's not a, a surprise attack, nor do you have anybody next to him. If there was, if one of your party members was next to him, you would get your sneak attack damage. So you're basically just going to get your regular damage, which is the short po damage is the one D six plus three. So you just double click that once <coughs> and you return fire and hit him and giving him five points of damage. And you can look at him on the combat tracker and you'll see that there's some damage there. Okay. He's, he's holding actually his is a little bit. Let me, uh, he is not looking good. Good. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, you that's your part. So you have action. You also have movement. So you can either move or you can hold your ground. And you can break up your movement between actions. So you can say, I want to move 15 feet, shoot, and then I want to move another 15 feet or however much movement you've got. You're a halfling, so you only move 25. Each square on the map is five feet. So the question is, do you want to move or do you want to hold your ground? Is there anything else you want to do? Um, sorry. So, how much how much uh, movement did you say I had? You have you're short. You're a little short. You know. So you uh, most people most medium creatures. The rest of your group has thirty feet. You only get twenty five. Right. So there's not anywhere I can really go to. You could show as a halfling thief. You know. Yeah. They're all seen. You know. You could say I want to try to dash to the. The, pavid, the stand where he's at and try to hide under it and, you know, and try to hide maybe, you know, um, even though he kind of watches you run and under there, but, you know, luck could be with you. Who knows? Or you can just hold your ground. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to have to sign back into the, uh, to fantasy grounds because it just came off for some. What happened? Did the, the system close on you or did, because fantasy grounds. Did yeah. Say... The, this the system closed on me. Okay. Uh oh. Um. Yeah, you can just just you, reloading. Yeah, you can go back in. I shouldn't have kicked you off, but the fancy ground should probably still be is still loaded. The system, the the remote connection kicked you for some reason. We'll test that in to make sure that there shouldn't be a there shouldn't be a timeout on that as long as you're doing something. Alari, let me know too if that happens to you while you're playing. Yeah, will do. Okay. So while he's doing that, but Dwee, would you want to do anything or are you going to hold your ground? Uh, I'll probably hold my ground for okay. the moment and okay. wait wait for it. Okay, so I'll pass your turn while you're reading and getting reconnected. Damakos, you're next. What do you want to do? Can't hear you. I was pressing the wrong keys. <gasps> I was thinking about using my acid splash, but it says it's got to be within five feet of each other. 
That's right. And those two, are the two at the top, are they within five feet because there's a five foot gap between them? Well, now you can, you can still, um, sh just shoot one. Now the two that are straight. So they're within five feet of each other. They're close enough. I'm not, you know, they're, they should be standing five feet means they need to be standing next to each other. Okay. So we'll just do this. There you go. We care. We want to have you, so you can try and you, and so, but you also look at your acid splash has a range of what? Uh, it's got to be within my range. So that would be 30 feet. So I'd have no. to move forward, wouldn't I? But no. I can... uh, 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 uh. Look at your oh, acid splash. Go it... look, look at the shield on acid splash. Open up the shield. I read it wrong. It says range of what? The very top. Sixty feet. That's right. So you can cast that thing from sixty feet away. So if you, so you can target, you can target them, and you know you're within range because that means that's twelve squares. But if you didn't know for certain, like I said, you would control click on one of the targets, and then put your mouse back on top of you, and that will give you the di distance from where you are to the band. Yeah, uh huh. And that would show you that you're forty feet away. So. You're going to cast, you want to cast acid blast on both of them, correct? Okay, so you hit the magnifying glass that's next to acid splash, and it shows you there's a save first. So you double click the save one time. Oh, no, oh, just no. <laughs> no. <laughs> just once there, dear. Um, but they, so the we'll take the first ones. So they both. Okay, so they both failed. So uh, you're going to now you uh, click the damage dice now just once. You just you, yeah, there you go. And they both get uh, yeah. So um, one that was one and two. Since yeah, let me give it to them both. Okay. Why didn't he give it to? Oh, because one say see one thought is see you collect it too many times. Your first your first save throws both of them failed, and so Fantasy Grounds knows that it needs to give him full damage for that because you clicked it multiple times. It didn't do it right, so I'm going to give it to you, and you're going to see that both of them take acid to the face, and it they scream out in pain as you would you hit him with a loogie? You kind of spit at him. What did you do there, Damakos? I spat at them. You spat at them. Oh boy. He's got acid for spit. Okay. Now that's your attack action, but you still have movement. So y'all make sure you understand. So in, in, in an action and when it's your turn in combat and all that, you have the phases of, you have movement, you have an action, and then you have possible reactions or bonus actions, depend on whether you, you and y'all need to be comfortable with your spells. Cause some of your spells may have a bonus component to them but so that movement in that action part can be mixed up together so like i said you can move and shoot or you can shoot and then move you can move and not shoot but the question is would you y'all are all standing right there in one bunched up little group you know and y'all so this is where y'all start learning how to combat and, and work with each other to understand what in the situation how we all would react as a, an adventuring group this is what part of this is for but the question still remains, Damakos, would you move? I'm going to move out the way because I'm the closest to the big guy and I have the least hit. Okay, so where would you like to move? Probably to the side, to the so building. You, so what? So let me show you. I'm going to lock tokens. So now you can you have 30 feet of movement and you want to know how your movement is. Go to the main tab of your character sheets all of y'all and you will see that there's a speed that's how much that's how much you can move during your movement phase now you also all have abilities that you can dash and a dash option is basically you can run for double your movement but you don't get to attack then it's basically you're foregoing your attack option to run somewhere fast just so you know but you've already attacked so you have 30 feet of movement 
So that means where would you want to move? You grab your token and drag it where you want it to go. And it will show you how far you're moving. Show me where you're going to go, Damakos. Okay, that's 25 feet of movement. I then approve the movement. Your token moves over. We're going to put you right up here to the side of the building. <clears throat> he spits and runs, folks. Okay, now, when you're done with your turn, Watch on the out. combat tracker down at the bottom, there's a little down arrow that says next actor. You're going to click that down arrow. Sorry, what are we talking about? On the combat tracker, this is one of the things, when we're in combat, you got to have it open. There is a down arrow. There you go. That's how you pass your turn. Okay, and it's now the captain's turn, and he just kind of sits there, and he's laughing, and he goes, what you stupid fools get for standing next to each other? Go get them. Stop your lollygagging around. And he just kind of stands at the top of the stairs. I want their stuff. Bring it to me. Kill them if you must. Delg, your turn. Hmm. Right, well, I got two hand axes. Can I chuck one and then run at them and then hit them with the other? So you, so you can do an hot, you can do um, uh, like an offhand attack um, that you just you don't get the bonuses for. I'll show you how to do it, but you can, if you want to throw one. Normally, when you do a ranged attack, you have to stay with ranged attacks. Okay, if you choose to do a melee attack, then you could hit the other one, you know, up the side the head. So, but it, depending on the check that you choose, you have to stay. Well, with my it. movement's only twenty five feet. That's right. You're small too, so you only can move five squares. But you've got, what? you've got creatures within twenty five feet. To be in melee with them, you need to be next to them. That puts yeah. you in. Okay, and you've got either the guy to the right of you or the two to the south of you. You got one directly to south. You can move up to him and attack him. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to attack the two at the base. Okay, so you would you, you could do your movement. Try to move yourself into the center of a square. That's 25 feet. Okay, now you've run up to him. Now you want to hit him. Um, now hand axes don't have as much damage as your war hammer. No, I'm going to go with the war hammer. Okay. So you're going to control click on that creature. Target him. There you go. Then hit, then slap him with that war hammer. Now, what's cool about this too, you also can drag your attack, just so y'all know, y'all can grab the attack die and actually drag and drop it on a token if you want. If you don't have them, if you don't remember to, can, you know, target them, you also can just grab it and drag and drop it and it'll do the attack for you. Now, you're standing right next to him and you totally, don't damn it. you totally whiff. So this is where inspiration comes into play. You can say, I'd like to be inspired and I'd like to re-roll that attack. So you would uncheck your inspiration at the top of your character sheet so that you've used it. And you may re-roll that attack again. I think that was just embarrassing. So it was embarrassing. It. They all started laughing at you. Maybe we should get him a box, boys. One better. There. <laughs> That's a hit. So now you give him the damage. Say, what would you like to say to the man as you put him to go meet his maker? If you look at the if you look at the combat tracker, you just killed him. I have to see if a catchphrase or something. Yes, you do need one, dog. You're a dwarf. Okay. Gonna enlighten us from the other side of the pond. There's something that you might say as a, a British dwarf. It's hammer time. <laughs> <laughs> Get Merck's boys. Ooh, yes. So, 
we won't bring out the Monty Python stuff yet. We we won't subject them right off the gate, uh, folks, with that stuff yet. We'll get there. Don't get up. It's only a flesh wound. That's right. Okay. All right. You you kill them now. That's your movement. That was your attack action. You don't have really. I don't. You know. You need to. Y'all need to look through your stuff. If there's bonus actions that you would want to do or not, I don't believe you have any right now that you need to use. So that being said, you would pass your turn if you were done. Then you hit the down arrow on the combat tracker. Yep. And now the bandits turns. So these two are quite pissed and they step up and they're struggling to see, but they want the purple haired freak that spit at them. And so they step up and they level crossbows at Damakos. First one slams into Damakos. And the second one slams into Damakos. Oh boy. Damakos gets <laughs> Oh no! Damakos has two crossbow bolts, slams into his chest, and he falls up against the wall. Not looking really good right now, folks. They both laugh. Yeah, that's for spitting at us. Ah, shit, man. Bandit 3 runs over here. You just killed my friend, dwarf. Pulls out a sword. Swings at and misses barely. I mean, just if you just stand a bitch taller there, shorty, would have killed you. This one. Did you take some of the hair off the top of my head. Yeah, I gave you a haircut. This one runs up to the sweetie little girl. Stick my sword in ya. Oh, uh oh. Oh! This one's gonna run up to the wee. Oh no. <laughs> it doesn't look good for Dwee. Dwee goes down to Alaria. Right. When was Dwee um, given a who, healing potion? Who is looking the worst at the moment? Who is Dwee. looking like they're just going to keel over? And All right, hold on. Yeah, so well, Dwee, I bad. just was told that Dwee was given a healing potion. Okay, I missed this. Okay, so Dwee, uh, you'll have... Um, you could take, so um, give me a heal. Here, let me actually do it for you. I'll, I'll explain this to you because this would have taken off some of the, uh, um, hold on, Dwee, you're not in combat. Let me show you. Um, oh, I didn't give you, holy moly, 2d4 plus 2. Dwee gets four hit points back. So Dwee's not... Dying right now. Okay. Right. Okay, Laurie, that, say that again now. Sorry, I didn't. I missed that. You got a healing potion earlier, Dewey, so you're not dead. I didn't code it. I forgot to code it on the character sheet. I'll do that later. What are you asking me, Laurie? Who's hurting? Yeah, so I guess now Demacos is looking the worst. Yeah, Dem Demacos is now, what happens now, she has death saves she has to make. Why well, and it will be automatic when we get to her turn. Unless you heal her or you run up and stabilize her. That's what I was her. thinking. But if you run away from these individuals that are next to you, they get to swing at you for free. It's called opportunity attacks. They have you engaged. Ah, okay. Well, in that case. So the best question is, what is your best attack that you have Attacking. to try to save... Um, I think I need to use one of my weapons if they're that close. That or your poison spray. You've got a... Yeah, I could use my poison spray. Yeah, yeah I'll you... do that. Okay, you just hold your hand up. and So what you're going to do is you're going to target that individual. Okay, 
then go to your yeah make sure you're in, you're in combat yeah so then go to your poison spray hit the magnifying glass so that it opens up poison spray and you see that they have a con save they have to make so you're going to click the con save to see whether or not this bandit takes the damage or not he does unfortunately he takes the damage he, he makes a save and he jumps out of the way as a as you burp a pot of poisonous gas at him maybe that's i don't know how the brits do it so um but he yeah unfortunately now you may use your inspiration if you want to try to make him fail that save again because he succeeded so he doesn't take any damage he's not going to take any damage from that attack do you feel lucky um yeah i'll use my inspiration okay so check it all uncheck it so that it disappears give him the save again now he failed so now you give him the damage you've got the 1d12 poison damage so you're going to click the poison and it will roll it where am i going <laughs> so under your poison spray you saw your save well right below that see the damage it says 1d12 the that's the damage for the attack nicely done see devious they're in the middle of their training session you just you coughed up a big old cloud of poisonous gas into his face and he you killed him did you want to say anything to him yeah i'm a bit of a hermit so i just kind of nod he crumples to the ground <coughs> yells the b word at you as he dies <laughs> i'm like this little halfling that's just like looking up this massive high elf like damn yeah, this big old cloud of smoke, you know, gas is, you know, poisonous gas came out of her mouth. <laughs> Just vomited poison Pretty much. all over them. Apparently your spellcasters in here like to spit all their spells out at people. They like to hack That'll them up. That probably be the wine that was had last night. It could very well, yeah, it could very well be. Okay, Alaria, so that's your attack. Now, there's not really movement-wise that you can do. Now, y'all, you do have all, well, and actually you cast, so you can't do a dagger attack, so... Um, you, uh, don't really have much more that you can do right now. Cause if you move, uh, okay. that bandit's going to be able to swing at you for free. Okay. So yeah. if you yeah. are done, I'm staying put. then you're, then just pass your turn. Hit the down arrow, the next actor. Okay. We're back to Dwee. Let me Dwee. You're not unconscious. Okay. You were healing potion. Um, he stuck you pretty good. Kill them small man. Now. Here's where you're going to want to attack because you're going to, if you can hit, you get your sneak attack damage because you have an ally next to the target within five feet of the target you're swinging at. So your roguish abilities will come into play here. So Okay, so can I attack it with a rapier? Would that that's work? What you, have to do. you have to use a finesse weapon uh, with your sneak attack. And so what you're going to do is you've got him targeted. And now you swing your rapier at him. No, no, you had him targeted. Control click on him again. Okay, critical hit for Dwee. Really, you want to go ahead and give it to him? Oh. <laughs> just in the of nick he of does. time. Just in the nick of time. So here's what that happens. That means it's an automatic hit. So what you're going to do, two things. First, you're going to grab your sneak attack effect and drag and drop that on you in the combat tracker. So you expand out sneak attack, make sure you see the effect, grab the little symbol dude, and drag and drop that on you in the combat tracker. Does that make sense? Sorry, drag and drop sneak attack onto me. You, because it's your sneak attack. Okay, now you've done it. Now, you're going to go up to the, the next button you're going to do is the plus minus symbol in the upper right hand corner of Fantasy Grounds. You're going to click on that and you're going to click once on critical so it turns red. Okay. Okay. And then now give him the rapier damage. Go back to your, your character sheet. The, cl click the damage for rapier. I've already got him targeted. So it knows this is who you're giving the damage to. You're going to see a bunch of dice roll. Should I double click? 
Just double click once. Yep, that's the damage. Boom. Look at all that dice you rolled. That was your critical damage plus your sneak attack damage. And instant death him basically means that you hit him more double times as what he hit points was. So he could not even be resurrected. This could happen to y'all. This is an instant death. You basically skewer him so bad that all his guts spill out and pour on top of you. <laughs> can I run a? Can I run to cover? You can now. Yeah, now that he's dead, you, you you're free to move. Uh huh. Where would you run to? What do you want to do? The small man turned the bandit into a kebab. Well, uh, probably there's a stall on the right, just behind that. So I, I'm, uh, I'm behind cover. Well, you first got to move for me. Show me where you're moving. So you're, that's the next to it. You want to hide behind that is what you're trying to do somewhere near. So what you're going to do for me is you're going to give me a stealth roll in the tower. So that means you're going to go okay. to your skills tab. You're going to grab the stealth roll and you're going to drag and drop that in the tower for me. And he did. Okay. Now that's all I know. I know the roll. So anything else you want to do or pass your turn? I'm just going to have a look at my hit points here. So I'm, I'm down to four. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Uh, I'm just going to look at my inventory to see what well, you got a healing potion, but a healing potion is an action. You've already attacked. Oh, I and see. Moved. See, so unless someone, unless someone gives you one or there's a special bonus, you're done. Okay. I'm done. Okay. So you pass the Damakos who's in the throes of death. Oh my God. She look at that folks. She rolled a 20. So a 20 on yeah. a death save means that you get a hit point back, Damakos, and you're no longer dying. But that's the, just remember now, if you rolled a one, that would have been two death saves. Your third death save means you're dead and you can't be, you have to, you would have to roll a new character up. That's how close you were to. Okay. So that's what that means. While you're already. Yeah. Already. Uh, okay. So, but you got a 20, you got the best you could. So you basically wake up, you're slumped against the building here. You have these crossbow bolts slammed into your chest. They really hurt. They didn't tickle. And you're kind of blinking, getting a focus of what's going on. What do you do? Do I have a healing potion? You do. I'll take my healing potion. All right. I dumbass did not even code those. Okay, so... You're going to get, let me give it to you real quick and then I'll show, I'll code those for y'all later. Okay. So you drink your healing potion. Oh, almost got max back. You are basically full health right now. Glug, 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 glug. Yes. You, you're like Popeye. You ate your spinach and, but you're still slain on the ground. Pick yourself up requires 10 feet of movement. So if you want to stand up, you basically can. And then you, but you, and then you would only have twenty feet of movement left. That's fine. I've got a plan. Okay, so are you going to move? Yeah, I'm going to move so I'm in range for those two that I. Okay, well you can move. Okay, that's ten feet. Going to move any more? Is that far enough? You got 10 more feet of movement if you want to move. 15. Any more? No, nope, that's as far as I want to go. That's perfectly legit. Okay. Pass your turn. So I'm going to use one of my um, level one spells and use the magic. Well, you've already done an action because you drank your potion. Ah, shh. <laughs> is that well, all I can do? Yeah, so unless you have a bonus action spell, I don't see anything that you've got really that bonus action no. is going to be good. No, that's all you can do right now. Yep. Ah, crap. <laughs> okay. This is this is how you learn ta this is how you learn tactics. You're learning how to play the game. Okay. 
But you are done, my dear. Damakos, you are done. You need to pass your turn, please. Do you remember how? There you go. The bandit captain just all of a sudden sees Damakos sit up, get up, and run over, and he goes, You fools! I don't pay you to play target practice. I pay you to kill. Put the purple-haired dude down. And then cut it off. I want to braid it into my beard. That's that a bit weird. What's D&D? &D? We're just getting started. Delg, you're up. What are you doing, dwarf? Go on, Delgy boy. I'm going to cave this guy's skull in with my warhammer. We'll get up on a box then, shorty. Smashy, smashy. <laughs> uh, well, in that case, I'm going to hit him in the nuts with my warhammer. You can do that. You can do that. You want to target him now, so do that first. Oh, just wait, Jeff. You're going to give him something? You're going to give the dwarf companion something? He hasn't met Tyrion yet. The, the dwarf... The dwarf blacksmith in the haberdashery. So, all right. Got him targeted. All right, swing of the warhammer, please. Oh, well. We call those derps. I'm still drunk from last night. I'm sorry, lads. Now, so... <laughs> Someone can, if you don't, if you have, you, so y'all can, if you have inspiration, you can also give it. Thanks for the follow there, phone. Appreciate it. Welcome to the rejects. Um, if you, if Damakos or Dewey, they still have inspiration, y'all can give it to one of your other players if you want to gift it. You don't have to. He's used his, but I'm letting you know that inspiration can be given to somebody else if they, if you so choose. Please. Oh, no. If, if you don't feel bad for him, nope. then don't give it to him. No, nope. okay. <laughs> purple head bastard is fucking selfish. <laughs> It'll make for some interesting nights afterwards at the houses here. You have my life. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Oh, okay. Well, Doug, I, I uh, unfortunately, you derped. You, mo you missed. Is there anything else you want to do? You just want to stand there with your head in shame. Can I dash away from him? If you move, he can swing at you for free. Yeah. Now, so let me uh, so you understand. There is thing called a disengage. You can disengage from somebody if you, but you will forego your attack action. So if y'all are next to somebody and say, "I want to disengage and move away," you're able to do that, but you can't swing. But the, you back away from them; they can't swing at you when you run away. Just so you know, but you've already done your attack. So unfortunately, you're locked in, Delg. So if you're done, pass your turn. Hey, what's up, Blazing? Thanks for the host. Good little Sunday afternoon D&D &D right. going on here. Hopefully we can uh, have people come over and enjoy the show. The British are here. They've invaded the channel. Does my AC do anything if he swings at me if I try and move? Because I got Well, yeah, he, he still swings against oh your AC. God. Yeah, you got... Oh, yeah, he's going to try to swing at you, but he gets a free shot. If you want to move, that's part of the tactics. If you think you can weather the attack from your 17, you can take that chance. That's up to you, though. No, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to finish this. You're, you're, you're a nasty bastard. Come on, get after it. Okay, uh, pass your turn. I'm staying with please. him. All right, well, they get up. They didn't. They throw their crossbows down. And charge this one charges Damakos with his scimitar and swings. Damn, I haven't missed you yet, damn. And hits you. This one says, Well, I'm gonna go after the pretty one here. I'm gonna shear her head off. And he swings at Alaria. Misses Alaria. Bandit three. Cuts down, t clanks off your armor, Delg. You miss, com he misses completely. Alaria, the bandit in front of you tried to skewer you. 
and missed. So I'm definitely going to try and kill him. <laughs> what are you going to do? No, shake he's his hand. Got... He's only got, like, he's near enough dead anyway, so just go. You've got a scimitar. You've got a sword. So maybe, yeah, use my sword. Either one of them, your sword or your quarterstaff, are going to give you the about same amount of damage. Just different types. I'll Either use my one. quarterstaff then. Okay, all right. And so you get him, target him, or you grab, You can, like you said, if you didn't want to target him real quick, you just grab the attack die and drag and drop it on the token. And that will do the same type of swing for you. But you've got him targeted, which is the correct way to do it. Smash him upside the face. You hit him. So give him some damage. Would you like to say anything to him as he crumples to the ground? I just like nod. Oh, that's right. You're a quiet type. Yeah. She's quiet but deadly. Anything else? Um, I. Name's not Fart. Valaria. I'm going to run up to somebody or close yeah. to somebody so that I can help when the time. Okay. I'm going to be brave and run up to the like towards the main guy. I think. Okay, he's right in front of you. He's he's looks like he's beginning to come down the stairs. He's thinking about it. He doesn't like what's happening here, and so he says. Need something done right, you do it yourself. Oh, the little girl wants to play. I'll play with you, little lassie. Can I cast anything else? No, nah, that's it. You did an attack action. You don't have any spells that are bonus actions. And so... Okay. You are... Well, I take that back. Okay, so you do have Shillelagh. That's a bonus action. And basically, that makes a a um, um, you basically can it's a, a like a magical wood or your quarter staff basically becomes with magical powers, and you get some extra damage with it. So you could turn your quarter staff into this magical glowing weapon that you're wielding. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so what you do is you cast Lele. And uh, we had that coded. It's not what? Not sure Lele was coded. So for the duration, you use your spellcasting ability instead of strength for the attack and damage rolls. And the weapon's damage die becomes a D8. Yeah, so it is a great spell, guys. Yeah, um, so it's 1D8 plus 1. So I just got to remember that. Okay. Um, and her strength bonus is one. So there's no difference on the strength bonuses. Okay. I just need to know that. I need to recode that. Boo. All right. Shalele. Yeah, Shalele's been, yeah, she's got a quarter staff in her hand. Uh, okay. That's your bonus action. So now you're, all of a sudden your quarter staff begins to glow as you begin to glower at the bandit captain looking at you. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Pass your turn, please. Dwee, you're sitting underneath the... Uh, uh-oh, where'd Dwee go? I just go? got to go and get Dwee and change places with him because the baby woke up. That's fine. <laughs> we'll hold his turn. He's not really much... Um, out, so he will... We'll play him out while he's taking care of the baby. We, we were warned that would happen, and that, that's perfectly acceptable. Baby has to come first. Uh, Dwee, what he's going to do is um, he thinks Delg has got it handled over there because Delg is a walking fortress. So he's going to step up and he's going to shoot his short bow at the one in front of Damakos because if he hits, he gets his sneak attack damage. See, so that would be his shot. So he stands up, he shoots at bandit one, he hits bandit one, he then gives himself the sneak attack damage and he does this. And he, oh, wow. Instant deaths the bandit in front of Damakos. Puts an arrow right through his throat. And he drops well, him. Sure, that is brilliant. Yeah. 
And so he's much then, better than the purple haired weirdo. And Dwee's gonna re, he's gonna reposition himself. This is tactics because now he wants to get a shot over here uh, in case he can with the bandit captain. Boom. That's how you play Dwee. I play rogues pretty much all the time. Uh, Damakos, you're sitting there getting ready to attack, and an arrow comes flying right into the th takes the throat out of the bandit. And you're, he crumples in the ground before you. And you see hatred begin to form in the bandit captain's eyes as he pulls out his sword. Well, I'm going to attack him then. Okay, what are you going to do? It's on him. Ooh, scary purple-haired tiefling. Ooh. Yes, your DM gets sarcastic with you a lot, so just get prepared for it. Uh, how do I select the character? Which character? What, sorry, what do you want to do now? My target. Yours? My target, you want yeah. to Remember, you want to control click on them. Hold your control key down and and click, double click on the token. There you go. Okay. And then what are you doing? Hold on. Got magic missile. If you're going to cast, those are auto hits. Magic missile are auto hits. You just get three bullets come flying out, and you just give them automatic damage. You don't. You don't even have to roll the attacks. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, so you're going to hit the. You're going to hit the magnifying glass. You're going to see the damage sitting there. The one d four. You're going to. You're going to grab. You're going to. You're going to throw those three times. You're going to click on them three times. You're going to see them throw. There's the first one, second one, third. Slow down. Okay. Three of them slam into him for a total of seven points of damage. And he, you see his chest kind of erupt in flame and it sizzles and all that. And he looks down and he just kind of, ugh. The tickle, the little one. Let me come give you a tickle. Anything else you want to do? I'm going to run away. <laughs> he doesn't want to be tickled. Okay. Where are you going to move? Am I able to do, like, the stealth sneak thing as well? You could try. The question is where you're going. You t Tell me what you're doing. I'll kind of explain to you what could happen. Um, I want to go behind that green thing there. Okay. So, I didn't do the sound effects. I need to turn them on for their game. Uh, so, you basically will make your movement for me to where you want to end up. Okay, so you run and you dash and you dive behind the green deal. So you're going to give me a stealth roll in the tower. I've got like a load of pop-ups. Hold on. Okay, yeah, so you get, yeah, you get a close. So go to your character sheet, go to the skills tab, <coughs> and then grab the stealth roll and drag and drop it on the tower icon in the right -hand, bottom right-hand corner, fantasy grounds. Yeah, playing on notebooks is a little challenging. If that's what you're playing on. Okay, there you go. So, I've got a roll. You run and dash and disappear. You think, you don't know. You're, But that's what you're doing. And then that's your movement. You're, you did a cast movement. It is past your turn. That's about all you can do. Okay, so... He runs and he Captain rocks and goes, Ugh, can't count on your friends to back you up, little one. Taste my swords. And he takes his scimitar and he swings it, hits Alaria, cuts Alaria down. Oh dear. Yeah, Alaria drops. He then... Where did the purple-haired one go? And he he kind of stares there for a little bit, and he can't see anything. And so he, that was 5, 10, 15, he begins to move toward Dwee. Come here, shorty. Elg. I'm swinging at this guy again with my war hammer.
Not so much. <laughs> All right. Does anybody, anybody feel pity on him or do we let him pass his turn? Would anyone like to help me kill this person so we could potentially... See, the thing life? is, I would give you my inspiration, but you're going to mess it up again. Yes, they're Not both in the same the house. It's going to be a cold night there tonight, I think. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. <laughs> she can sleep on the sofa. You can sleep on the sofa. <laughs> you're smaller than me. Oh... She's not going to give it to him. That is so awesome. <laughs> oh, no, come on. Advantage roll for that. Well, but you missed. Yeah, so no! He got advantage roll, but that's, it's not. But that's for his next shot. That's advantage on your next attack. If, right. Unless you're given right. it. Unless you're given inspiration. Then he can do it Del, now. I'll make a deal with you. <laughs> What's the deal? You're going to be my bitch until midnight. Oh, and you can God. have my inspiration. I mean, there's no <laughs> difference to how it usually is, so go on then. Is that a yes or no? Dale. Yeah. The yay? Oh. We have a, we have a, we, I, I think we have a Dell bitch card that we need to make for stream loots now, folks. I think we have a new card. You be my bitch. I like it. It's the first one that's come out of a gameplay. So, <laughs> Delg, yeah, so uh, Damakos, you need to turn your inspiration off, please. Now, Delg, you're going to make that attack roll, but you can turn on the advantage button down below uh, next to your dice. Click on the advantage button so it lights up and turns red, and then make your attack roll. Yeah. And it will do it. I'm an just going to swap with, um, with Rich. Okay. He got a critical. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. oh. So just give him the damage, and it will do a critical roll for you. You don't have to do anything. You just give him the damage. Instant death. You got him right in front of you. <laughs> Look at him. Thumbs up. <laughs> uh, would you like to say anything to him before you put him before he falls dead? No. You that's, go, that's my bitch. Is that what you want to say? Mm -hmm, yeah, something like that? I might be his bitch, but I can make you my bitch. There you go. Okay. So that was your attack. You still have movement now, so you can move up to 25 feet if you would like to. You, cur you turn and look. You see Alaria crumpled on the floor, and the bandit captain well, seems to be I, moving toward the... Uh, if I have attacked, I can't. Uh, dash can I, I, I no can you've already attacked that's right yeah uh-huh only the rogue has an ability that allows them to do that later on unfortunately you do not but you still can regular move though there you go okay boom that's nicely done that is your turn what's up uh we'll show you here in a second we'll catch you up uh Del just became Damakos's bitch. Um, okay, Laria had her first death save, so she's fine. Okay, Dwee. So what has happened is um, the rest of the bandits have been killed, except for the bandit captain. He came down the platform after you shot. Uh, actually, you. Sh uh, I think you may. Yeah, yeah. You did put an arrow in him. Um, um, no, he actually you moved over there to get a shot on him, but he came down, cut down Laria. And then moves is moving towards y'all, moving towards you, and you also hear Del running up to start to attack him, but he sees you and is coming towards you right now. Oh. Everybody else is dead is of the bandits. Just him left. Okay, can we try and like talk him? Oh, you can do you can try whatever you'd like. Kill him. You're on your own. All your friends are dead. Are you going to try this? Why don't you pick on someone your own side? If I could see you, I would. How's the weather down there? It's about the to fight's, get, about the to fight's get, done. It's about to get rainy on you when I start to pee I on you. 
I think we should kill him and then take all his money because he must have stolen from loads of other people. That's big talk for someone hiding in a corner. I have a plan, you bitch! I haven't seen a single hint of this. Am, am I hidden then? No, you're not. You came up out of... You were hiding before, but you came up out when you shot. Actually, you shot... I don't know if it was Alarius or Dell. You shot somebody, killed him, and then moved over to get a nice shot on to... Oh, actually, you shot the... Yeah, you shot a bandit that was in front of Damakos before she ran... Or he ran and hid in the green stall over there. So you moved over to get a position on the... on the To shoot your bandit captain. And then you you could shoot and try to run and hide from there, but he's stalking towards you right now. What would you do? Mm, okay, I guess I'm just gonna go up to him and stick a rapier. You can charge him. Yeah, why not? Fine. Go and skewer man, skewer him. So move up on him. You would move first. Okay, so that's 10 feet. You want to try to keep yourself in a square. There you go. So, you have now moved. And now you would target him. Give him a rapier attack. Unfortunately, you don't get sneak attack damage with this, but you still can attack. Now, oh you, have, you have inspiration. You're the last one left. You can choose. Okay, I'll take that. There you go. Turn it off and roll your attack again. That's a hit. That's better. Much better. Now give him the damage. Oh, nice damage. Max damage yeah. there. Almost cut him down. But he, he you skewer him. What? perfectly but he's still standing his knees are buckling a little bit Ugh. i start chanting the word small man over and over again <laughs> anything else do your pass your turn okay damakos hiding behind the green stall so i'm gonna come out of my hiding and okay. with my crossbow. Okay. So I'm going to show you something, We how we play uh, a, a little bit difference here in D&D. So give me your movement, please. You want to try to stay behind him. Let me tell you that. I'll show you why. We have a flanking maneuver we use here on this channel. As long as you stay behind the creature. So let me explain. Y'all have seen this. As long as you stay behind a, a line that intersects, okay. So I've cut the I've cut the token in half, basically with the line. So if you're as long as you're behind that line, you're not touching it. You're I call you kind of flanking behind. You can shoot with advantage, and you can shoot or attack, but the creature has to be engaged with somebody. And right now he is because of Dwee. So you've come up behind him, and he is not paying attention to you at all. So that means now you could click, before you do your target him, click the advantage button, and then make your attack roll. And I will explain this to you all a few times until you all get used to it. You do that on this channel. It's not all channels do this. Shoot when ready. I'm clicking it. I'm clicking the wrong thing. Hold yeah, probably. So make sure you click advantage. Make sure that's turned on. And then with your... Sh with uh, your... Go up to... Well, Dan, whoa. I can't see... What did you do? What happened here? Hold on. Um, somehow, hold on, hold on. It must not be turned on. Crossbow. Where's your crossbow? One second. Oh, it's not equipped. There it is. Okay. Now we're back to combat. There you go. I got to equip it. It got turned off somehow. Now you may shoot your cross. No, you don't have to. You don't. Uh, you don't check it off yet. It'll do the check off. Turn your check that back off. You've got your advantage turned on. Roll the attack of your crossbow. The plus three button. There you go. 
Oh, even with advantage, it flies wide, slams into the building up above his head. Purple head creature is useless. And it will go inspiration. Unfortunately, they're all out, <laughs> Damikos. I wouldn't give it to you. <laughs> You're my bitch. You have to. I don't have any. What cards have you got? Uh, the cards, uh, Damakos's card was... I've got the quiet one, which is for the long rest. Yeah, that's not... Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, I can't use it. And the cards only are applicable to you. You can't trade the cards. Sorry. Damakos, unfortunately, you, uh, put, you hang your head in shame, and you're, unless you want to finish any of the movement, you're done. Uh, I'm going to move closer to Alaria. Okay. You may move up to there, and you would want to move. You could finish your movement there. You can move up to her, okay, um, because you can stabilize her next turn, and you want to try to do that before she has all her death saves. If she has three death fails, death's roll fails, she dies. And right now, she's one save, zero fails. So you basically would move up to her, and on your next turn, you can do a medicine check to stabilize her. I'll show you how to do that. Other than that, you would pass your turn, please. Or you can give her a healing potion that y'all still have. Someone may still have theirs. So, Can I give it to her before our next turn? No, because you've already done an attack. Uh, it's an action. But you can grab it as a free interaction. You're basically rummaging around and you've got it in your hand to give it to her next time. Shove it down her gullet. Okay, the bandit captain gets hit and is pissed and takes his scimitar and swings down on Dwee, cutting him down, I believe, here. Dwee goes down. Oh, the small man. Small man. And he turns and he charges, roaring. He has a second attack and he swings his scimitar and he clangs right into Delg crashing, cutting into you. Like I said, you got to do it. You do it yourself. So is that me with seven hit points gone? Yeah, exactly. You are halfway down right now. But it's your turn now. He's he's attacking you. I'm just going to swing straight back. I yell from the grave, go medium-sized man. <laughs> yes, King Bashman, we haven't told them how we really administer their potions yet. We need to slowly build it up. Potions aren't administered through the mouth. They're administered on the other end in this game. Is control click to target, isn't it? Control is click on the token, or you can do it on the, on the combat tracker. You can control click the bandit captain in the combat tracker. Either way, you control click the token of the captain. Yeah, that's not working for me for some reason. Control click, uh, make click on your token. Yeah, there you go. Cool. I've got my laptop and my computer at the moment. It, it, it may be lag. You get a little, you, yeah, you get a little lag every now and then. But you've got him. He's targeted now. Come on, please, please. That's a hit. <laughs> Give him the damage. Wow. Look at how good you hit him. You hit him real good. Good job. Not being so Loco, good. yeah, you oh, just man. gave him you the him critical hit. We'll hold on to it. He just downed the captain. And y'all sitting there, and the captain falls to the ground. And y'all, your two of you are looking at your down companions. And then you all of a sudden you're staring and looking, and all of a sudden the, it becomes very hazy, and darkness rolls through the area, just like light shutting down. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you all four wake up in your beds back at Praetor's. It was a dream. Oh. You wake up, and you're ushered to uh, the dining area and Prater's sitting there and he apologizes for putting y'all through that. But he, it was a test. 
Does this mean I'm not Dan Lacoste's bitch anymore yeah. because I never actually? Go no, we're gonna let you. No, we're gonna let. Le what? Ha yeah, we're gonna let you in stay. Yeah, pretty in your dreams, uh, because we like that. Um, but you all are given long rest. Let me actually do this back, and you get all your ammo back. Basically, it was a dream, and um, it was to see how well you work together in combat. And he says, though this, there are things to work on, but now you understand each other's motives, how each other's uh, actions, and you know, see a little bit of each of you, you know, in combat and learn and work together to become a stronger team because I have a feeling you will need it. Bandits are the least of your worries, I feel, as you venture out into the world. And so, yes, you wake up. You feel refreshed, though, maybe slightly hungover, and maybe you feel a little sting here and there where those bolts slammed into you or where you got cut down. But you look at your you look at your bodies and all that, and there are no wounds there. It was it was a dream, but it felt very real. It seemed very real. Um, and uh, he uh, wishes you all luck as you um, are sent out on your way down to the haberdashery to get the wagon, uh, get the supplies. Uh, and head out. Um, we lost two. Are they taking care of the baby? It looks like they're... Doing no, well. I'm still here. I'm Are just having a cigarette. Yo, well, you're fine. You can smoke. I don't care. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, y'all make your way down. Um, you check in with the uh, the with Zeke and Tyrion and Lavinia and the Grand Master, as he calls himself. Uh, and y'all are given a full wagon of stuff and he would let you know that yes, you are barely a day's ride behind Gundren and Sildar who had, who had left early morn before with, uh, they they were on horseback, uh, and had placed their orders of supplies, uh, and you, um, have those supplies that you're supposed to send off and take to Barthen's provision house in Vandalin. So y'all proceed. Uh, y'all have, like I said, uh, there is a wagon. It's drawn by two oxes and you have two horses. And y'all begin to, let me get back to the map that we had earlier. And let, everyone can let Alaria know that it was just a bad a bad dream. It was a bad dream. That was a bad dream, Gloria. It was a test. What was that? Well, I didn't see what was cashed in. Um. All right. Back to this map. All right. And so, what I want to know is who's driving. Anima, oh, it was just an animation thing show. So we have, like I said, you've got a wagon with provisions in it. It's pretty full. So someone's going to be driving the wagon and a rider. And then we've got two horses. What I kind of want to know is if we go to the order tab. If y'all remember going to your party sheet and going to the order tab, we're going to, what I want to know is who... Take a look. Got a wagon. Some oxes in it. Ooh, I mean, I'm drawing. I am a mean drawer, folks. And I'll open it up so people can see. And we got a horse on each side of you. Who's riding and who's driving and what do we, you know? How are we mo how are we moseying out of water? I will be riding the horse. I'll I ride a horse as well. On which side I of the wagon? So, so the girl, the lady, oh no, that's right, damn it, because it's a male, I keep getting messed up. So grab your tokens on the order tab. Now those are oxen. That's the wagon. There's a horse on either, you just put yourself on either side of the wagon. She would be proud of me, I know. Okay, so Delg, looks like he's driving. Alaria, you're on a horse, right? To the left yeah. side of the wagon. Okay. Sorry, Dwayne. I didn't have this. Fine. 
this is us just using it kind of as fun. And so we would have Alaria basically kind of riding off to the left of the wagon. So where's Damakos? Damakos, I thought you said you were riding. I'm going to have my like little feet hanging out the back and just okay. watching out back. That's fine. That's a, that's an ox in Damakos. That's uh, you want to be over here. No, that's the I'm back of the wagon, Del. The front of the wagon is where the, this is where the, the O's are where the oxes are at. Oh, so no one's actually driving it right now. Yeah, you just left. No. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, in Dewey's back case. there in the back. You're the driver. Way to go, Del. Okay, there you go. Probably the way it would work. Okay, that's all I need to know. There's our there's our party sheet, our order for while you're riding along, and so here's what happens. Um, yeah, you make your way up the road. We're back, you know, we're back to the main map, up uh, to the Tribor Trail, and it's, you pass a few other caravans, it's a, you know, a couple days ride so far, very un uneventful, and then you come upon, knowing your map, you become upon the uh, intersection of the Tribor Trail, and you hang a right, and y'all proceed to move along. Then, dun, dun, dun. Not before long, all the four of you can make me perception checks out in the open. I just want to know something. Would you be so kind? Is that under our senses where it says purse? We just no, your perception number. check is the skills. It's under your skills. The skills tab. Your perception. Passive perception is something that I play against that you might see just doing normal day, everyday stuff. Uh, that, that, that was good to me. Okay. Yep. Del, you're driving. All right. So, here we go. Um, and we're missing Alaria. Wife is having an issue with the dogs. Mine's freaking out. Yeah, mine's having a moment as well. One moment. Well, you got, uh, I got one from Del, Damakos, and Dwee. I got perception checks. I just need one from Alaria. Yeah, the system right. has just gone mostly no, it's, black. It's, it's, well, there's a map coming toward you, so you uh, you got a bigger map, and so if it's all black, the screen popped up. You need y'all need to look to you're going to be sh looking to the far left side of the map. Any? There you go, Alaria. Okay. Now, do y'all all see the map? That I just showed you? Yes. I can only okay. see part of it. Yeah, that's right. This is called the Fog of War. You can't see everything right now. Here's what's getting ready to happen. So, we put everybody... In. So, here's the wagon. There's Dwee. Oh, no. uh, and here's Del. Aaron. Make sure you all got it. And... Damakos. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So, every square, like I said, is five feet. And this is what you... Y'all are moving along in the in the um, wagon, and everybody pretty much, well, unfortunately, Damakos uh, maybe saw a butterfly in the sky and was kind of going, ooh, was looking at it. It was, it was, pretty, it was kind of pretty. and was thinking maybe it was she was purple Dumbass. butterfly. Yeah. But the rest of you all begin to notice that uh, there are no longer birds chirping in this in the area there are no sounds of wildlife it has become deathly quiet except for the sound of wind as it blows through the trees what you see before you is the road begins to turn south into a little ravine area uh, and you kind of see that there's tree lines and you you know you can see the ravine you can see and i'm kind of showing you what you would see normally up until you got into trees basically 
okay and then you're kind of blocked off and then your vision you can't really see much that ravine looks like about 10 feet up that divot in the ground and the road kind of goes down and you see one also looks like it you know it's kind of cut the road kind of turns and twists out of your vision you can't see any much farther on the road but three of you begin to notice though however that it is awful quiet unnaturally quiet i tell the other guys um that we got to stay aware and just maybe be as quiet as we can as we can, can we go off the path so we're you can do what you want to. I'm just letting you know. You're, you're driving. Dewey's there. The two are on horseback. And this is what, all of a sudden, you're you know moving along. And then you the three of you begin to notice something's not right. That's it so far. Should we try going at the top of the ravine so we don't get trapped in this little valley? I say the I... birds are warning us. Well, the wagon has to stay on the road. Unfortunately, the wagon won't Ooh. make it. It's full of provisions. The only way to get it Shall through is... Is to move on the road. And y'all begin I, I, to... I will scout ahead. Okay. Yeah, so... I was going to say, if someone want to go ahead. So how would you do that, Alaria? You're on horse. Do you want to continue just riding forward on your horse? Yeah, just ride forward. Okay, so make a movement for me. Here, let me lock tokens. Let me make sure. But she's horse... going on her own. She's, yeah, she's moving on her own. And horse ha horseback has... Horse has 50 feet of movement. Could Damocus go at the same time on like a pincer kind of movement on the other side? Y'all are, are free to move. They're not combat right now. Yeah, Dam Damocus, if you come with me. How okay. far are you going to go? She moved I'm 50... going like all the way up there. Yeah, she moves straight up. See her ride up. Okay, both of y'all ride up. And then this definitely, Damocus, you begin to pay attention because the butterfly floated off. Um, it got serious all of a sudden. Y'all begin to hear oh, no. flies. Bzzz, you hear the dun of flies, and you look. And f you can see that the forest line hugs the um, area fairly well. And you can see what looks to be um, the road curves through. But right here in the center, you see two corpses of looks they think they are horses there are two horses dead in the right in the middle of the area we shouldn't go alone no we need to wait for the for the rest of them so can i come here the guy the what now they need to come hither Come with us. Yeah, the wagon can move up. Yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, y'all move up. The wagon comes along too. And the rest of y'all can, yeah, the, from the wagon top, you stand up on your tippy toes. Y'all are small. Uh, and you can see there seems to be two dead horses in the middle of the road. What do we do? I think we should investigate, but maybe at the same time send Dwee and another person up to the top of that little ridge, just in case, so they could maybe fire down on people if we get attacked. Yeah, we need to check for ambush, that's for sure. Are there any animals around? That's the point. There are none. They're there should, horses. There should be, except for two dead horses. They dead. Yeah, exactly. Well, I can't speak to any of the animals. Uh, no. You definitely look around. There are no squirrels, rabbits. There are nothing. So, Can I call out? Do whatever I'm you gonna want. I'm going to go up top to the top of the ravine. To I reckon the I should because I'm the stealthiest. So I can go and just More check out. Well, I got the top. Del. Looks like he just hopped off the the uh, wagon and ran oh, no, straight. I, I, I didn't mean to do that. that That's fine. Just let no. You gotta let me know, and I will, I will unapprove the movement. Zzz, 
just just flies, you know. So we're sending Delg and Ilaria up top, and me and Damakos will go and investigate. Yeah, Dewey's gonna scout ahead, so because he's the stealthiest. Yeah, I've put in a request for thirty feet of me, but I'm going to uh, stealth. Okay, so you. Well, it's the middle of the day, and you're just running on grass, running up a field here. Just so you know, you can try. You can make me a stealth roll on the tower, but you're right out in the middle, open, and it's broad daylight. Okay. Now you can run on into the trees if you want. You got closer, and you can see yeah. there's tre- a tree line is thick with trees. And then you see what looks to be a cosp, you know, more trees over here. Uh, and you can run into there. Okay, let's do that. Okay. But, like, can I go through the trees? <laughs> you can, once you, be, you begin to know the trees are very thick, if you move into... Now, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on excuse me, sorry. So that's a movement for you. You ran and moved up and dived into the trees. But the trees are really thick. As you begin to move through them, you lose half movement because you oh, have I to. See. Okay, but that your that's your movement. Now I need a stealth roll in the tower, please, for you, because you ran and jumped headlong okay. into the bushes in the middle of the day. Bright sunlight. Going. I don't think anybody can see me. <laughs> but you can make me a stealth roll in the tower. Yeah, I'm just getting around all these boxes. Yep, there you go. Well, now, while the the uh, halfling did that, the rest of the three of you... Can I climb a tree? You may do whatever you want. You know, you're on a horse right now. So you got to get off the horse, and then... Yeah, I get, I, get, I get off the horse because it's safer for the horse, and I'm a druid, and I don't want any animals to be... Fun. Okay, so you're gonna, you just leave the horse there? Well, I'm leaving it with the um, the trailer thing. Well, there's nobody on the trailer. You gonna tie it off? Yeah. Do you have to be specific? So these are the questions. Someone needs they... to. Yeah. I'm gonna tie my horse to Damacus's horse. Okay. You give her. You give Damacus the reins. That's fine. And then I'm going to run up and tr- climb a tree so that I can see up high. Okay. So which way are you headed? How far can I go? Well, each square is ten. Each square is five feet. Now that's so. Yeah, uh, so that's it's ten. So if you're going to try to cross, you're going to that ravine. That that thing is ten feet tall. So it, there's movement there too. But you're also going to have to give me an acrobatics check. Because what you're trying to do is move um, up a dirt wall. So when you hit that, you were there. It's fine. You hit moved about 20 feet. So I need an acrobatics check. That's on your skills tab. Go give me acrobatics. Just throw that out in the open. Okay. You just needed a 10. So you moved up 10 more feet. So that was your first set of movement, and you're standing right here, looking down, and you can see the horses, you can see the trees. Now, you can still move if you want. You can still continue to dash. you got 30 more feet of movement. Yeah, I think uh, I'm going to go climb the tree. Well, you can move to the tree, okay. Climbing's another action, but you've done a dash, so that's all you can do is just run under the tree. Okay. Okay, at least I can see more from up here. Yep, yeah, yeah, you move right there. Okay. Can we uh, can we see what it looks like killed these horses, or are they? You, well, you you not from where up? you're at. You're gonna have to get closer. Yeah, I'm not gonna can be I that do... easy. Come on now, Del. You gotta <laughs> Go get. On, Del. You gotta get up personal, baby. Can I, Del? Go survival check them out. Check? Can I do a survival check? Because it says here I can identify signs that owl bears live nearby. Or whatever that is. You you tell you me know, what you're trying to you you're so I've got a movement already from the door. I mean from the rogue. 
And from Alaria, so now it's your turn. What are you doing in your turn here? You move up. Can I move okay. a little bit closer? Okay, so you move up into the road. You begin to look, and you can tell that there are two horses. These kills are fresh within the last day. Um, and there are arrows sticking out of the side of both animals. Black tip, you know, black feathered arrows. The woods press close to the trail here where the, the steep embankment and diff, dense thickets on both sides. Those horses have been dead. There's blood everywhere. And you breathe, you see something. You can't tell what it is, but there's something small lying in the road on the other side of the horses, but you can't tell what it is. Uh, I'm kind of on my own here. Can Damico stop being a wuss and come join me? I was waiting for you to finish. Any other thing else you want to do, Delg? No, I'm going to wait for him. Okay, so Damico, you're left. Yeah, so I'm going to go move here. Okay, you get off your horse and you run under the trees. Okay. So right. you've run away. That's about what it looks I'm like. I'm tying horses up then. This purple-haired bitch. <laughs> I'm tying the horses up so they don't run away. I see. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, I That's approve of Hold on. Listen to me. That's a free interaction. You're allowed to do one free interaction per turn. So you can grab the... But you've got both horses. You move over there and you tie them to a tree limb. That's perfectly legit. And the then I'm going to move closer. Okay. So, so listen to, so hold on. So it was 10 feet to get off the horse and 20 feet of movement. So you've done a, you've done, you still have a, you can dash, which is another 30 feet of movement if you want. Okay. So I'll Damico's, go there. there you go. Okay. Cause that's as far as I can go with the horse yeah. is not yeah. running away. So let me enlighten you about what's happened here. So y'all move up and then all of a sudden, Alaria, you're sitting there looking around and all of a sudden you hear this, hee. <laughs> And you're standing right next to this ugly looking creature who blended right well in with the tree and all that. He looks like this. He doesn't look very friendly at all. And come here. You didn't see him, unfortunately. When you ran up, but he was sitting right there next to the tree and he pulls out, he had a bow in his hand with black feathered arrows on it. And he smells and all that. You're kind of surprised you didn't catch his smell, but he is staring at you and he tries to, she's actually fumbling with his bow and his scimitar. He's trying to reach out a sword to get you, but he fumbles it because he's in the trees and you ran up on him so fast. He wasn't prepared and he tries it and he goes, ah! he screams out when that happens. Delg. Y'all her, y'all hear that scream coming from the trees over there. You can't really see what's going on because it's 10 feet up and farther away. Uh, and Delg, you're a little bit shorter, but you also, however, though, standing there all of a sudden whoosh, coming from somewhere an arrow flies from the south and slams into the dirt next to you and a second one <coughs> two arrows fly from the south you're not sure where they came from but two arrows flew right past you Delg. the four of you may roll me initiatives now we're serious Um, wait a second. I thought I gave y'all all, hold on, long rest. Hold on. Yep. Okay. Y'all are all rested. So let me just make sure. All rested up. I'll have all your arrows. You have your healing potions. They were never really used. You all have your inspirations. You can turn those back on. Since it was all a dream. Okay. Um, once again, Dwee, 
You're in the back there. You heard a somewhat of a scream up ahead, but you can't see anything. You dived into the brush line, into the trees, and it's thick here. You may move along the tree line at half movement, or you can step out and can do regular movement from there. But for the moment, you are in the thick of things. It still says Dewey's unconscious on the... Oh, here. Yeah. Why is that supposed to clear that out? I gave a long rest. All right. And then it shows the same thing for Laria, too. What the hell? Okay. Boom. Rolled intelligence? Who did? Oh, she rolled it right, though. She got it back. She rolled the right one. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that was noticed in chat. <laughs> All right, Dewey. What do you want to do? Well, I should probably peer around the corner and uh, can I can I easily see this guy? No, you don't see anything. You're behind trees. You're, you dumped, you jumped. Oh, into the I see. Forest. I see. Yeah. But you, oh, heard a, my... you heard a squeal from somewhere. My plan was to run through the woods. So I'm, I'm just going to do that regardless. You can move half speed. Okay. I think the halfling, however, has got halfling nimbleness. Uh, that's moving through Psy. You're naturally stealthy um, when you're obscured, which you are. Um, and then lucky is when you roll a one, you may re-roll that. Okay. All right. So um, what are we doing? Still half speed, yeah? Yep. It's thick. Okay. Just All the way to the ground, too. Up. Okay. Well, I haven't got the best speed, so I'll, I'll probably come back out into the open. Okay. Okay. So you run out into the middle here. Yep. Yeah. Uh, make me a perception check. We okay, yeah, you can see Alaria's got her hand, something's moving in the tree with her. You see some ugly creature trying to fumble with its weapon to swing at her. Okay, can I um, shoot it with a bow? Mm-hmm, yep. You think you can? I'll give it a shot. Target them and then attack. Okay. Yep. Oh, you only need the first one. That's okay. That's fine. It's still a hit. Hit it. Slams in the air. The square. Nice. Um, I run towards it a little bit more. No, you've already you did your movement. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's me done. That's it. That's your turn. Damakos, you saw two arrows slam into the ground in front of Delg, but you have no idea where they came from, other than they came from the south. You do know that from the trajectory, but you saw nothing. I'm going to move closer to Delg and see if I can see anything. Can you go right ahead? Okay. All right. You may make me a perception check, please.
And where are you looking? What are you looking at? What are you looking for? Where the arrows went and what they were targeting. Well, they were targeting Delg. They landed in the ground next to him. And they're, they look like the same arrows oh. that are sticking out of the horses. So where they came from. Where yeah. they came from. Okay. Perception check, please. You have no idea. They came from the south. You don't see anything happening. You see the trees moving, you know, in the wind a little bit. There's still no sound of animals. You heard a squawk coming from the tree line to the north. The Alaria maybe tangling with something. You saw you Dwee an arrow fly into the trees. Squawk. But as far as to the south, you see nothing except trees and brush line hugging the ridge line up there, you know, on the south side. I'm just going to stay where I am next to Delg then. Now, you may hold an action also. And so through, if you if, about me. if you tr if you don't take an attack action, you can say I want to hold like you've got a rain. I want to hold my crossbow, and if I see something during the rest of this round that I can target, I want to shoot at it. You are quite capable of doing that. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll get my okay. crossbow out ready. That's fine. You're holding cover. It's called Overwatch, like type deal. And so you're watching the tree line. Okay, that's it. Pass your turn. Delg, what about you? Can I put my warhammer away and pull out my two hand axes? Yeah, it's free interaction. Mm -hmm. So you're holding your hand use, axes. And that won't use up an action. No, it does. It's free interaction uh, is is one per turn. So that's what you do. You, you're changing out weapons, but you're standing there holding your axes, looking imposing, swinging at nothing. What do you want to do? I am going to... God damn, this is tricky. I might charge over to whatever that little thing behind the horses is. It's called a free interaction, to Dungeon Tomb. You basically, it's just, you know, object interaction. They can... Um, it's just the ability that you have. They could open a door. They could draw a weapon. They could dismount. You know, they could pick something up off the ground while they're in the middle of something. You know, it's a simple free interaction. They could pull out a potion, you know, if they want to hold it, you know, for their next turn. Things like that. Okay. Sorry about that, Dub. What now? Can I pick a rock up off the floor and throw it into the... Well, you got, you said you got, you got hand axes. I don't know, too. It seems like a bit of a waste if I just completely miss. You... Your choice. It, I would consider... Yeah, you're going to throw the hand axe into the tree line. With a no target there, but I will give you, I will give you a perception check. Make me a perception check. Okay. And I always ask if you want to know something, there's no stupid, y'all are new to this. I want, you know, and unsure what's going on. Uh, well, yeah, you, uh, that, um, that butterfly, maybe that had Damakos's attention earlier may have flew by you real quick. And it, uh, yeah, you didn't see anything. Then you snap back to the arrows that are sticking in the ground next to your feet. But you have nothing to target at the moment. But it doesn't feel All right. right. <laughs> I'm going to ch charge over to one of the trees and start chopping at it to see if I can shake anything out. Okay, so, we, so you got to remember, that's okay, so... <laughs> Jeffrey, so you move over to this tree here, okay, and what? And you start hacking the tree. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, Good. Jack. That's now perfectly that everyone, fine. Now that you're saying, now that you're saying it back to me, I understand how stupid it sounds. <laughs> it's a very you move. There's a small amount of logic to my idea. Not much, but a small amount. I'm surprised. A minute amount. This is where I would love that, uh, because I don't have push to talk on my channel when I'm playing with the players who are in the video call, or I could just mute myself, because this is where I would say the goblins that they know are here, they all stare and they go, they're kind of looking at each other. 
they're watching this going, and their mouths kind of drop open, their tongues kind of come out, and they're going, Who's this stupid midget? And they're kind of frozen in a moment. They, they watch this dwarf go attack this tree with a hand. <laughs> We're definitely getting the Dell bitch card now. That is definitely in the works. Okay, folks. We actually, we maybe will I'll, make I'll it a, make one. It will, we'll make it a merchandise shirt. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's what it is, Tomb. So it's just, uh, yeah, so it's just a free interaction. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, there you go, Loco. That's our new meme, the the, the, the idiot sandwich. Yeah, uh, so it's just a free, one simple free interaction. I thought it's in the player's handbook, too. It's not homebrew rule, isn't it, guys? Um, I thought there was a free interaction that you can have with an object. Pick something up. That's what it is, yeah. Object interaction. There's a bonus. Uh, it's such a, I just allow it. Yeah, if he want, he was changing out his weapons real quick. Normally, even in an attack action option, I would allow that if they, as long as they weren't engaged with somebody, you know, he could drop it. They could, they would say they were a ranged weapon they shot with, and now they want to charge him with the scimitar or weapon. They could drop their bow and pull their weapon out to do a charge. I would allow that, but they couldn't change out the weapons and do all that. They'd have to drop exactly what's in their hands to pull the next weapon out and run. So I would allow that. That's kind of the stuff we're talking about. Um, Okay, so Delg is fiercely attacking a tree. Anything else, Delg? Or you want to pass your turn? I think it's fairly obvious this isn't getting me anywhere, so I'm going to move back to Demacost. It's okay. We were we pick on our half-orc on the Friday night on the North American tour Come version back, of this. Bitch. Yeah, we, were, we pick on the half-orc. He does some maneuvers like this, too. So it's quite all right. This is why we do this game. It's for beginners to learn and have it's fun. It's all like Jack. And you're not a reject for nothing. I have a nothing. feeling this is going to okay. happen again. Okay. Okay, uh, Delg. Oh, yeah. Oh, so well, you're done with your movement. You've only got 25 feet of movement, Delg, and you attacked a tree, so you don't have any more movement. Okay, cancel that then. Is yeah, there I did. Else I did. I can do. So, Dungeon Tomb, no, no, Dungeon Tomb, their channel. So, uh, check them out. Um, um, yeah, there's a simple question. So, just a little bit different. It's uh, you know, I do the same thing with my flanking maneuvers uh, and advantage on attacks and with an engaged creature. It's not a little simple house rule, homebrew rule that I do on the channel. A little bit different. Uh, pass your turn, sir, if you're done. <laughs> okay, so this one uh, that's in front of Alaria, finally, yeah, he finally, he just, he dis, he's all discombobulated. He drops his short bow and all that, and he reaches nimbly and grabs his scimitar and swings at you. Oh, dope! He made his own derp. He rolled a one. He missed. His, he swings his swings his sword and it catches in the tree limb, and he squeals out and he and. However. We. Perception check, please. Don't think you're going to beat that roll, but I'm just giving you a chance. You can roll that perception check out in the tower, please. Oh, no, never mind. Don't worry about re-rolling it. It's a one. You're lucky anyway, but don't worry about it. Um... an arrow comes flying out from you catch it first you get hit by it oh god dang but it came from somewhere this direction out of the tree line slams into you um niblet would you calm down there boy See you, Jeff. We'll talk to you later. We got uh, tomorrow night on the Wizards. We're doing, uh, if I didn't tell you, Satanic Panic. We're talking about uh, uh, the old days. Um, Berg's getting up on his soapbox again and some stuff, but we're going to talk about D&D and all the stuff that happened and relay some of the articles and just kind of chat about that. We don't, we don't no guest tomorrow night. It's just going to be us chatting again. So make sure you come check it out. Um, yeah, trip down memory lane. That's exactly right. All righty, this guy is going to 
an a tree a arrow slams right into the tree above your head, Delg, coming from right directly, but you know somewhere you don't you know you're hacking the tree, and it just slams into you. But it definitely came from the ridge line somewhere, um, missing you, and. An arrow slams into Damakos. Damakos, you can make me a perception check, please, with advantage, since you got hit by it. Please. Please get into it. Once again, yeah, once again, that butterfly. That damn butterfly is in y'all's face. Uh, you know the arrows I, came from... I love a butterfly. Yeah, the arrows came from, you know, somewhere in that direction. Because it's, you know, trajectory and where it hit you and slammed into you. Alaria, your turn. I am going to attack this guy who is in my... He's in your face. Well, yeah, you you kind of ran up into his face. You didn't social distance properly from the goblin. Okay. I did not. No, you did not. Um, and I'll go so ahead and identify I will him. poison spray him. I will cough. Him. Another the, the Brits have a lovely gaseous cough they like to do, or farts. They're quite deadly. And spitting. We didn't know that about the Brits here. Um. So yeah. Well, first you got to target him. So grab that save. You can actually, since you didn't target him, you can actually grab that number and drag and drop it on the token. And it will tell you whether that was a save or not, if it was successful. Uh, actually, you don't, I don't want you to do that. I actually want you to target. That's actually just the save that you need. It has to be a 13. So actually target the creature. And now give him the save again, please. <clears throat> That's actually just the DC that he needs or she needs to beat you. Oh, but that was, that's much, much, that is a success. Now, you have inspiration. You want to try to rehack, hack on them. What would you like to do? Yes. Okay, so un uh, use your inspiration and re roll that save for them. You reach deep down inside you, make this even deadlier. Do I still have him selected? Yep, he's still selected. Yep. Until he dies, or you unselect him. Uh, unfortunately, he still succeeds. You hack, and uh. the wind, right as you're hacking, a, a, a force of wind comes through and it blows it away, takes it away whoosh, from him. A gust of wind. And he kind of laughs at you. <laughs> Cheeky little goblin. I smell worse than that. That's for sure. Anything else? Or you can pass your turn. Dwee. What you want to do? Got an arrow stuck in you and it hurt. Yeah, I need to make it. Can I make another perception check or? You certainly can. You can do this with advantage this time, do we? Right. You see movement directly. There's something moving in the tree line. Okay, around in here. Um... But you can't tell what. It's awful dark. Make me a nature check, would you? Please, Dwee. Coming up. Okay, so you paid attention in class that day. So you, you're thinking, you you know, the noise you're hearing, what you kind of saw Laria dealing with, that you're dealing with goblins, uh, which kind of makes sense since they're rat little bastards. Um, but they have a uncanny ability to hide even better than you. 
And that's why you think you're having a problem targeting them and all that, you know, and they are sneaky little bastards. Kind of jealous okay. of them. <laughs> and you are in the open and not looking good. Cool. Um, well, I will yell to the others to um, run back to the cart and we can use that for, um, I don't know, move that up and use that as a now kind of... Now that you said that, back. you've noticed that the cart, the ox started they weren't tied up and they begin to they turned around and the cart's going down back the direction y'all came uh we need that ah uh, the horses are fine the horses got tied up they're over here yeah i up guy hey horses are good but the cart, well, unfortunately, um, they didn't get handled. <laughs> Do we go get the cart? I might have to dash after. Do we close this? We're going to call this, this is the D pick on Delg session, session today. Okay. So anyway, I, I'm not so certain you need to worry about the cart right now. It is only ox. Okay. And they're slow moving. Yeah. I was thinking more for cover. Okay, let's. I'm just gonna uh, fly another arrow at the uh, gob. Okay, the one you see that Laurie is messing yeah. with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because okay. I can't target anything. Yep. Then you hit him. You've got your sneak attack damage because she's right next to them. So that's a good call. But you definitely want to cool. think about getting the hell out of sight because you're, you know. Not yeah. Good. Can I? Can I attack? Yeah, you can. Your attack and your movement can be done in any order. It's not particular order you can attack first and move second so however you want to do it you just let me know okay we do have is it, I thought it was yeah crates we do have crates for people and new we do the loot card system we've got cards and all that that can be handed out um uh, which games dungeon? Um, he's got his own stuff. He ran on. He now he hasn't run anything yet on our channel. He starts his uh, door. He starts uh, yawning portal May seventh here on the channel. If that's what you're asking about. Uh, oh, Dwee, you missed. Now, you Was that a one? No, it's a seven. Uh, okay. But now it's a twelve. But now you have inspiration. Oh, Don't see forget. It. Okay. If you want to try to. No, who's who's up? I'm pretty sure who's after me. Um, me. We need to kill this goblin and get the fuck back out. Oh, dungeon. Um, he's yeah. I I need to get the first one. So his uh yeah his uh game should be. Let me make sure they're there. Yeah, you're talking about the ones for uh Sagman Isles that he was doing well in with Josh. Yes, they should be up on the YouTube channel. Um, let me we verify that here in a second. I know they're uploaded. Um, I'm sorry, Dwee, what were you saying now? So you missed the goblin, but are you going to do any movement or anything? Or are you going to stand out there in the open? Yes, I need to move. going to just hang out in the forest line. You're going to jump into the trees. You're still out in the open. Somewhat. Or you can hide there. Sorry, I'm just getting around this uh, whole interface. Yep, it, it takes a little bit of use to. So you move 10 feet, you still have 15 feet of movement. Or you can try to hide in the tree line right there. What, what do you think you want to do? Um, I was thinking moving back just into the tree line. I think. Well, it's remember as soon as you hit it, you got about another five feet of movement because it's half movement. Once you hit the tree line, it becomes difficult terrain. 
So you got another five feet that you can jump in and around in here and boom, because you've already done an attack action. Yeah, so, well, okay. I'll, I'll just stay there and then... Okay. Give me a stealth uh, roll in the tower, like please. Give me a stealth check in the tower, please. Sorry, I'm just moving windows around. <laughs> it is a lot of stuff to have open. Okay, that's what I need to yeah. know. Okay, you have done that successfully. You may pass your turn now. On the combat tracker, down at the bottom, you'll be good. All right, Damakos, and an arrow slammed into you from the South Ridge line. What do you want to do? So I'm going to meet as close as the Dell, ask him what the hell he's doing, and then see if I can see where the hell the arrow came from. Well, you're yelling at Dell, you see him hacking a tree. Uh, you can make me a perception check, certainly. Where are you looking? Um, I'm looking to the south terrain. It's a big area. So to see where the arrow came from. Oh, I know, I know, but yeah, your, yeah, your, your your generalities and all that. So, uh, you see some movement, um here Ooh I see one I'm going to try and hit him with my Baron arrow Yep he's there Thump! Hits the tree right above his head. And he looks up. Ah! And he jumps down. He, he basically looks like he's getting ready to duck for cover. But the bow, the arrow hits the tree right above him. Now you have inspiration. Yeah, I'm going to use it and go again. Okay. And check it and shoot again. That hit. Okay. Awesome. Give him the damage. Slams into him. Oh, and he staggers back. He's still standing, though, but it looked like it hurt. Awesome. Right. I'll pass my turn over. Okay. Pass it to the lumberjack. Get him, Jack. So. Yep. So. Uh, stop hitting the tree. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good idea. Fantastic idea. And I want to throw one of my axes if he's in range. Uh, how, well, do I, how do I so find out the range going, of my axe? So yeah, right? that's what you do. So well, you can open up. So you can. Uh, you want to see what your range is? So go to your character sheet. Look at your actions tab. Click on the hand axe, okay, and it will have a range weapon, a range number, something da something dash another number. You see it? If you're talking, you're muted. Uh, it's got hand axe, and then there's a little bomb symbol that says thrown. Click on the shield. You want to know about the shield when you, that's shield. the information button. Okay. Yeah. 
Yep. All right, range is 20 to 6. Okay, so that means inside 20, you're throwing regularly. Anything between 21 and 60 means a disadvantage. Anything after 61 means you can't throw it. it you're not going to be able to make it go that far. So you control click on the goblin. Okay, target him. I'm going to move up a bit closer first. You could. You could do that too. That's fine. Now, the issue is, yeah, so 5, 10, 15. So you want to move. So that's 10 feet up. The ridge line is 10 feet up. So you need to you need five more feet of movement. Move up five more feet, and then he's inside range for you, just so you know. Okay, yeah, perfect. Now Thank you can you. now you can throw your hand axe. Control, yeah, target him first, then chunk it. Okay. You throw it straight at him. Thump. Give him some damage. Cleaves him. It smacks right into his chest. And he just falls. He's in gasp. His eyes shock. as this thing. You actually hit him with something. And he falls over. He thought he knew your reputation. And he dies there under the tree. Can I roll for perception before I end my turn? What would you like to perceive? I want to look at that tree. The one that's at the far end of the ridge, just below where the horses are. Okay. All right. And you're trying to see if anything's there. Yep. You can make a perception check. You don't see anything. Damn. All right, that's me done. That's you. Nicely done. You got your got your first true kill. All right, um, Laria, this thing tries to swing again. Pissed that it hit the tree. It is jumping up and down, having a temper tantrum because the tree is getting in its way, and it's cursing the tree. Um. However, you've got a problem because... <laughs> How dare you curse trees. The other goblin over here is another goblin who shoots at you from your side. Oh, a tr an arrow slams into the tree just right above your head. It came from somewhere. You don't. You couldn't tell, but it came from somewhere back over here. You're fairly certain um, that you've got company. Um, then... Damakos, an arrow slams into you again. Knocking you off your feet as she's un unable to tell you where that arrow came from, Delg, but it did come from that tree. So it came from that direction where that tree's at. Elaria. Right. Um, I'm not. Is there any way of like trying not to kill him? <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> because called, I can speak gob. Well, if you yeah, so what you have is something called yeah, you have non-lethal damage. So if you think you're getting ready to kill something, you can say I want to strike him down, but I want to knock him out. And if you kill him, then basically you just knock him out. You you know you didn't do you didn't do a lethal blow. Most certainly can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is what I would like to do. Um, okay. So I'm going to use my... Uh, you still hit him. You still use your regular weapon and all yeah. that. Yeah. And you'll yeah, give him the damage. My... Yeah, okay. You, wanna, you untargeted him. Okay. Some reason you untarget. Just oh. grab the grab the fourteen and drag and drop it on the token of the creature uh, on the goblin right in front of you. Just, boom. Okay. Um, I'm gonna 
boom, it missed, unfortunately. Got caught up in the tree limb, too. Oh, man. <laughs> now, you have an offhand attack that you're allowed to do. Y'all can do that. If you're not going to take any action, you have you have an unarmed strike where you can punch them, or you can basically, like, you're swinging your dagger. What happens is you still get the attack, but you don't get any of the plus bonus damage with, with an attack like that. So... Uh, I'll give it a go because I don't really want to move at the moment. Yeah, that's fine. So you can, you can choose either your dagger or your arm arm strike, and you basically just punch at him. Is he selected now, or? I know you got to control click on him. Control click again. You only have to do the control click once until he dies, or you want to target something else. It'll always stay on there. Okay. So your your on either either yeah your dagger your dagger might do a little bit more damage or your unknown strike will definitely give him two points. Oh boy, oh well. <clears throat> you swung yeah same thing happened. You two this tree is a uh, uh, thwarting y'all's attacks. It's a problem. It is a problem. That is all you can do, my dear. Okay. Okay, uh, so we are at. So I want to make sure I'm not keeping it up too late. It's uh, we normally would go three hours. Do you want to finish this encounter, or do y'all want to hold? I'm happy to finish if you guys are. Yeah, yeah, we're happy. Okay, just making sure. Don't want to keep you up past your bedtime. All right, do we? We're in lockdown. There is no bedtime. At the moment, you are hiding in the shrubbery. Okay, can I like move forwards through the shrubbery just a little? It's half movement. Yep. So you're only twenty five, so you basically can only move about ten feet. You're crawling through. Yep. That moves you to the tree line there. You can kind of see out what's going on. See Alari and this goblin getting tangled up in low hanging tree limbs. You know something's over in the other tree line, but you haven't seen it, and you didn't see its last shot because you were hiding. But you know something's over there. You're fairly certain. You're not dumb. You're dwee. I'll, I'll make a perception check. You can. Um, I haven't got a clue. Can't see anything. Okay, I'll, I'll hit that goblin then. Okay. Your arrow slams into it. Pinning it to the tree right in front of Alaria. Damn! Amazing. Good job, small man. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it, I think. Damakos. Her first death save, death fail. No. It's a fail. All right, that's it. Uh, Delg. Oh, no. Uh oh, here comes the. Course is dead? She is dying at your feet right now. Someone help, help me. Hey, I think the uh, the Del bitch comments come back yes, into play now. Help me. Help me. <laughs> Are they able to, like, can Damakos, like, see anything or hear anything? No, she's out. She's unconscious. I'm unconscious. Uh, I suppose I'll help him. Um, Dungeon, just hop on Discord if you want to, um, and just PM me. Please say hi there. Hit me up, and I'll be more than glad to chat with you. We're done here. This is a we normally we're running two to five, two to five thirty. This this is a group. Uh, they're six hours ahead of us here, all over season in England. So uh, I don't want to keep them up too late because they need their beauty sleep just like us. But uh, yeah, but after that, I'm done for the rest of the day. So just shoot me a PM there, please. All right, <clears throat> sorry, Doug. What do you want? To, what do you want to stand over Damakos and kind of laugh at it a little bit, or? Um, 
Oh, you're in Denmark. Um, okay, I apologize. Right. I did not. I forgot that. Did not. Okay. Well, can I help him up? Uh, give him a health potion. Well, so what you can do, you can as an action, you can use her health potion or your or his health potion, or you have yours, either one, uh, and you can force feed it. Yes. Yeah. Use my health potion, so you've got That's yours. Fine. All right. So first of all, I'm going to spit on Damakos and then help them up. <laughs> I'd give them a health potion. Okay, so you rumble around, you find <laughs> Damakos's health potion in, because remember, you've got two, Del. Don't forget, you are given an extra one. So don't forget that. Um, I'm keeping them in case. I know, I, I noticed that's why I brought them up, so she could hear that. Uh, and uh, so, Damakos, I need you to check yours off, though, on your supply tab, okay? So turn it off. So it, And make sure all of y'all have your mode under your, uh, under your actions tab, Make sure the mode down below is all set to combat. So no, I'm Duff four. I'm Duff five six three dungeon. Dude. Josh is Mech forty five. No, I'm Praetor's Rejects. So Duff five six three. So if I said it's a combat, my um, hand axes disappear. Uh, here, going back. You had chunked them. You need to. Yeah. So you've chunked one. So, um, oh, they need to be armed. Sorry. Here, where's your hand axes? They are not equipped. There they go. It's just a. It's. I'll show you that. I'll show you what it is later. They're there back now. The on the inventory tab there are two symbols. There's one that's a little bag, or it's it's a brown symbol. It's a bag, or or it looks like a, a shirt. It has to be changed to a shirt to show that it's equipped, and that's why it was disappearing. That's all. So, cool. but you've Thank you. okay. There you go. So Damakos has turned off hers. So you're gonna we're gonna give her two d four plus two. And Damakos plus two, so that's six points back to Damakos. You you open up her mouth, you say open wide, and you just ram this potion down her throat. His throat, sorry. You are welcome, bitch. Thank okay. you, bitch. Oh, boy. This is the name of the group, the bitch group. Um, so, um, but that's your action. So anything else you want to do, Delg? And y'all are all four good friends, right? Making sure that. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That they put yeah. up with each other. Okay, just checking. So. Uh, I'm going to get up, try and get up onto the top of the ridge. Okay. So that's, 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 uh, to climb up, it's 10 feet. It's, it's, it's not very, you know, un it's unstable dirt. You know, it's kind of a ridge line. So it's going to take you an acrobatics check to make your way to be able to climb up the ridge line to make that successful move. That is all you needed was a 10. You move up and it's 10 feet of movement to get up the line. So you are standing up there looking around and you see the goblin right by your feet that you just put a hand ax in. You can reach down and grab it. If you would like, I'll I'm give that to you. Grab it. There you go. Even though you already grabbed the potion, but Hey, I'm a giving DM. I don't want to just, you know, until it's really time to kill him. And then it's game over. Okay? <laughs> All right. He's being nice for now. I'm being nice right now I, um, to the Brits. Could I do a perception check? Oh, I, I think you're good on your that? checks and all that, Delg. I think that you have uh, okay. you've, you've played it out there. Nice try. Oh, so, <laughs> I was I was nice I until the welcome. end there. See? Um, hey, you've always got to ask. You've always got you can to always ask. ask. There's, there's always an ask. I love to say no, even though DMs aren't supposed to. Not here, folks. It's in my vocabulary, and I like to kill my players. So I'm not bashful about it. Play aliens with me. Anytime you want to come play aliens, I'll run an aliens game for everybody. I will mercifully kill you all because um, we're allowed to. Uh, you're done, Doug. You can pass your turn, please. Unless you feel like hacking at that tree for a while. No, he doesn't. Why not? Okay. Um, well, well, well. Do we see you shot? And you killed this guy's friend. And so an arrow. Oh, wow. Slams into the tree right next to you. Dwee, would you make me a perception check? Or favor. Weeby. Perception check. 
Because you were watching this time. Uh, unfortunately, you needed a 10, We Still don't see the damn thing. Damn. But it did come from that tree somewhere in there. There's a pesky little bitch. Goblin. And you can't see him. However, <laughs> Del you can see stand, me. Del is standing out there like a <laughs> the statue of Liberty. Hello, folks. And <laughs> this goblin has got a serious oh, slammed right into you. Wow. I would say he's the tallest statue of Liberty. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, it was just, uh, um, what statue do y'all have over there that stands out in the open for everybody to see? I don't know. Del. Del. Okay, Del. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, Del, yeah, as you're preening and showing and you reach down to grab that hand axe, you hear, that's my friend, and it slams right into you. But you you don't know where that, you came from the tree to the left there. You know there's something over there. You just can't see it. Um, Laria is uh, back. Okay, she's back. Okay, yeah, her turn. Um, we killed the goblin. It's pinned to the tree right in front of you. Um, and you heard movement from the trees to your east. Can and I you do a perception check? Uh, you may. You weren't really watching when that happened. Because you would were fighting. But you may yeah, you know what? Make a perception check. What can it hurt? Oh! Oh! Oh, that might just do it. That just might do it, folks. It does. You turn and look. And he's standing there. He just shot at Dwee. Okay. And just we'll say the cart. My actions tab. The oxen cart is just continually going off down the road with the supplies. Okay, can I reach him with poison spray? Well, you can target him and see what your distance is. Control click on him, then put your cursor back on top of you, and it shows you the distance. And then what's your dis what is your range on poison spray? Unfortunately, it's only 10 feet. So you would have to move. Okay. You would need to move 15 feet up to get in his face. I, see Indy. I saw something moving in the background there. Mm -hmm. Okay, then um, does this guy have a bow? An arrow? He, uh, oh, yeah. It's what he's been shooting. Yeah. Now, you know, so combat tactics will tell you, and all y'all know that, that, if you move up within melee range of someone that's been shooting they have disadvantage to try to shoot you because it's close up. So basically what happens is they begin to maneuver. They try to then draw their weapons. So that's, you know, how you're trying to get somebody out of range shooting is that you get up in their face, but then you, but now you start taking melee damage, you know, instead of range damage. So depending on your number of hit points and your AC, you're trying to figure out what the best, best maneuver is. You're so, Yep. You're I'm running up to him. I would because here's the thing. You you know that Dwee's a, a rogue and he's got sneak attack damage. And so getting up and close to him gives Dwee the ability that if he hits and all that, he gets extra damage on that attack to try to drop that creature. Now, you're not the yep. kind. You, you're, you're doing that, but you're not a melee person. So, you know, you're easy to hit. You're squishy. But you definitely can move up on the on the goblin. And now what do you want to do? He screams out. I want, ah! to, I want to try and um, poison spray him. Okay. All right. So then now you've got him targeted. So then you're going to give him the save. 
He fails the save. Give him the damage. You breathe at him and he... <coughs> that kind of nice. That kind of smelled nice. Smelled like flowers. That's the best you got. <laughs> I can't do anything else really. No, nope, not really. Mm -mm. But it was a tactical deal. You got some hit points off of him. Now it's up to Dwee. Now, here's what I would, Alaria, what I would have had you, so, so tactics, had you moved a little bit more off to the right, the goblin is engaged with you, is facing you. What that happens is now that gives Dwee advantage on his attacks because he's now behind the goblin. And yeah, I didn't so, even think of that, but, but I'm giving yeah, it, I'm, I'm letting, I'm giving it, that's why I'm showing you. So I'm giving it to you. It's, it's part of my rules. It's not all, all five eBay's, but it's how I do flanking and all that. And so I'm going to give that to you that, you know, that you're getting in her sacrifice, but now Dwee has a clear shot to the back of the goblin at advantage. So Dwee, I'm assuming that you might want to take advantage of that. It's just me, or you can go hide in the bushes again. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm going to hit him. <laughs> so you got advantage on the shot. That's a hit. Get, okay, now give yourself the sneak attack damage first because she's up on five feet with the creature. And then give the damage. No, got to do the effect. Need to. That's just the shield. You open it up. There you go. Now, roll your damage, please, from the bow. Um, you must have control. Grab the damage. Grab that eleven and drag and drop it onto the token. You untargeted him for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, you don't have them targeted, that's why, but this still was a hit. Boom. Plugged him. He drops to yeah. the feet of Alaria. <sighs> Anything else? Uh, can I make a perception check into the wood? Leave away. Niblet, calm down, dude. Storm's coming? Something? Damn. Dog freaks out when it starts raining. Okay, maybe we'll go for a walk and we're done. <clears throat> Sorry, what am I looking for again? You said perception check. You wanted to make a perception check to see if you saw anything. That's right. So go to your skills tab. You guys are getting the hang of it. It takes a little bit of time, but once you start seeing it a few times in action, it'll, it all makes it play. Yes, but you do have to drag your windows around. A little bit from time to time to understand what's happening. Okay. I think uh, that's, that's what's taking the time at the moment. Just that's performance, do we? Now, did you want to dance in the trees? That's a performance. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I got my own really small resolution. I was thinking maybe he wanted to show off Delg for the uh, the lumberjack maneuver, but I wasn't sure. So, y'all do little things differently over there. Okay. You're perceiving nice. and. Um, there is movement. You can't, it's coming from somewhere deep in the woods there. You don't see anything though, but you're, you, there's something back there still. There's no doubt about that. You just don't see anything and you can't really tell where, but it's deeper in the woods. Okay. Um, doesn't seem close that close. Okay. Let's put it that way. Well, but your senses are high. Little... They're on alert. Your spidey senses are tingling. What would you like to do, though? You have shot. You still have movement. Yeah, I'm just having a look at my options. Tipsy. Shepherd. Okay. Can I move he, there? He jumps into the woods. Yep. That's your movement. 
because you're half speed when you jump into the woods. Okay. That is it. Damakos, you are finding yourself face down in the dirt. Your face is a little wet. You don't know what from because it's not raining, though. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure my bitch fat on me. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm not your bitch anymore. Till midnight. Oh, it's you true love, back. folks. True love. Can't you tell? Okay. Um. All right, but you can pick yourself up off the ground for 10 feet of movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You see the dwarf sit up there, but he's got an arrow stuck in his side. He's looking a little pissed. I'm going to walk away from him. (laughs) Oh, my God. I just saved your life. I don't care. Anyway. (laughs) I trust you. Praetors has chosen well with this group, folks. He has chosen his rejects <laughs> well. Okay. Where are we going, Damakos? I'm, I'm going to move towards the hall. Okay. You can. All right. 20 feet of movement. You stand. Yeah. So you move up. These horses definitely with the arrows stuck in you and everybody else and what then stuck in them. They, this, you know, they're all the same arrows. The, the, um, the it satchels, suddenly dawns on us. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, the satchels and their their sacks and all everything's been looted off these horses, except for their you know, except for the saddles themselves. Uh, there and then you see um on the other side of the horse that little that little five foot square is there looks like it's a sh- big map case, but it's open and it's just kind of rolling on the ground, and that's all you see. At the moment, I might just get my bow out ready. You can. Am I able to do a perception check just to make sure there's no one around in the surrounding area that I'm looking at right now? You don't see anything alive by the horses and all that. No, that's that's all small grass. The horses, flies. There's nowhere to hide in that area. Yeah. Okay. So you're in the um, clear. Am, am I able to look in the trees by Delg? Not if you're searching the horses and you're looking at the horses and all that. You can you can have your action ready to shoot if you see something. If I'll have my bow and arrow out and turn yeah. my back That's to fine. Dale. But your back's to Dale, so you're basically looking to the north, <laughs> not to the south. <laughs> now nah, look towards him. That's what I thought. We know better. We know better. Okay, pass your we're turn, all please. We're part of the same team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're trying to work on. We're trying to work that teamwork out. That's right. It's okay. Functional. <laughs> it's very defined. It's, it's reject. That's why we do the rejects. It's highly dysfunctional. Trust me. You haven't met all of the haberdashery crew yet. All right, uh, Del. What are you doing? Uh, I'm gonna go over to that tree over there. Let me let me just move my. Mm-hmm. Build. Yeah, you run into there and you run right up on. He's standing, he's cowering down, and you run right up on him. Ah! Use your hammer. Can I switch to my hammer, or do I need to, now that I've engaged with him, do I have to use the axe? No, you can, if you, well, you axe, or you can drop the hammer, and you can, you can free interaction with your warhammer. Yeah, you can swing at him. Right, I'm going to drop those hammers, and I'm going to squash this bitch. It sounds like you're the bitch. We heard about you before you got here. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Word travel, sucker. (laughs) Oh, let's see if he can do it. Can he he handle the smack talk the goblin's giving him, folks? I'm going to take it as a no. Oh, no. He hit a 20. (laughs) He does it. That pretty much will probably end this goblin's life. So, but you go ahead and give him the damage. That's oh, we get a Batman out of that. Sorry, he gets a Batman. The, the critical hit. All right, give him the damage there, Del. That's all you needed. Kapow! That's right. You clobber his head off. You hit it so hard it flies off. It almost hits Damakos. You yelled out four. 
and this head comes flying out of nowhere straight for Damakos, screaming goblin head, ah, just coming right at you. Okay. Well, that's not a butterfly. There you go. Anything else, Delg? Uh, I can't move anymore, can I? Cause I just can't move anymore. Eye. Yeah, and y'all, you're basically seeing. You can see kind of out from where you're at. More tree line. Uh, you see um, to your north. Um, there's trees. You see in a little gully area, and it kind of goes off deeper. You know, so. Okay. Can I just do a perception check on that one tree to my southeast? That one you want to turn? Yeah, time. that's fine. Oh yeah, sure. Perceive away, my friend. Don't hear or see anything moving. All right. We and Alaria. You hear a squeal. Sounds like a goblin squeal. And all of a sudden, it's the crash of brush. Something just like a jackrabbit takes off north, deeper, deeper into the woods. I mean, it's gone. And you know from goblins that they have abilities. They are, you know, he's gone, he's gone. But he ran straight back into the woods, totally away from you screaming, no, 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 and just disappears. And it, and then y'all are waiting for it. You're thinking an attack's coming, and all of a sudden... The birds begin to chirp again. You hear the wind blowing through the trees. You hear crickets chirping. You hear you know, the wildlife. Basically, you begin to hear natural sounds again as things return to normal. <clears throat> we are out of combat. Y'all wait and wait and wait for a few more minutes and nothing attacks. What do we do? I've made a movement request. You can move. Tokens are unlocked. You may move yeah, freely. I want to move as well. On Get the, the cart. Do we run? Do we? You run after the cart? Yeah, why not? Okay, do we? You can get the cart. Thanks, Dungeon. We're we're gonna wrap up here in a second. Uh, so I would like to quickly move again. I'm gonna you can move, Y'all this. can move around. I got. Do we run? Do we? You run and get up on the cart, and you start. You grab the ox, and you hop in, and you turn them around. And you basically can bring the card up to here. Okay. Well, my character's name is Delg Ironhead, and I would like to show Damakos why I have that name and headbutt him. <laughs> For leaving me on my own. No! Alright. While they're doing that, um, there's no, 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 no. I'm so. going to whip my tail around your face. Oh dear. You know, I think they're actually lovers. Um, so it's, Just it's a, a small amount of sexual frustration. There is <laughs> between, the, between the two. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, they do that spat. You, yeah, y'all look through the um, saddlebags, everything. There's nothing there. They've been totally rifled through. Um, <clears throat> you look at a map case. Uh, it looks like it's got a little, couple of blood. You can see some stains of blood on it. Um, but it is, but it's opened, uh, but there's nothing in it. Just rolling around on the ground. Um, these I would horses, like to the horses, as the well. horses, they're, to, everything's been looted off of them, but they've only been dead less than a day. They look, you know, they, you know, they're for, they were fresh horses, but you know, um, you have no idea who they belong to. Now, can, what you all, can we check the, can we check the dead goblins at all? Uh, yeah, the goblins, yeah, they got black arrows on them, but they look, they are kind of scrawny. Normally goblins, you know, they, you know, are not big creatures anyway, but these look like they haven't eaten in a while. Okay. You know, um, but y'all checking all out, you will notice one thing that catches your eye. So you see several foot, footprints in the ground, definitely a goblin size, but there are a couple other ones that are a little bit bigger, Beast man, some sort, um, but you could because you see the nice paw print and some claws in them, but they're not wearing boots. And two sets of drag marks, as though something two large things have been dragged. The trail goes this way, 
and then heads this way into the clearing and in the same general vicinity that you heard what you think was another goblin run off into the woods. Do we follow it or just carry on? We have to we have to follow it. And Can I go we'll hold there for the no, well. You get the horses, we'll hold there for the evening. Dun 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 awesome. Until next time, Brilliant. then they have choices to make. So there is your talk. You know, you decide whether or not you want to follow after. Now, yeah, I, I want to I explain it. I'm not going to explain it. We'll wait till then. Y'all can ask me questions. In, so in Discord, this is where between sessions and all that, if you've got questions to ask or you want to know a little bit, some side information, I'll give it out to you there. But the rest of it, we'll pick back up here. We'll do a recap. You know, We start our games. We do introductions, a recap. And then we pick up the action here. And we'll return right to this map. And y'all have a choice before you. Uh, information, discovery about following the trail, or you have a wagon full of supplies that you need to get to Fandolin. Now, the one thing you will know on the map, I will show you, um, is... No, 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 no. Um, what did I share with y'all? Um, so, based on your assumptions, the attack happened here where the circle's at okay that's about how so y'all uh and the and the trail the path and all that heads kind of straight up into some woods and all that are in this highland area so you're about a day and a half away from fandolin or you go into following the trail or whatever was dragged off into the woods that is our question for next week to be answered we will hold there, folks. Great job. I hope any comments, questions from the group? Did you all enjoy it? That was great. Yeah, it's okay. great. Good. Okay. That's what yeah, we want. Yeah, it was really good. That's what beginners and we've got a lot more to offer. We've got several months together. <laughs> Sorry for you. <y'all. laughs> um, and uh, we will pick this back up next Sunday. Really, dog? That's my German Shepherd going crazy. Uh, we'll pick this back up again next uh Sunday, 2 o'clock. Uh, everybody, tomorrow night, uh, like I said, we're on uh, Wizards of the Couch, 9 o'clock. We'll be talking about Satanic Panic and all the stuff that happened back in the 80s with D&D. Um, so we only had, we were going for five players dungeon with this group, but they couldn't get a fifth to load up, so we're running with four. So we tweaked the adventure a little bit for four players. Uh, it's still a challenge either way, uh, and they're newbies. And... Uh, um, they were going to learn. But, yeah, we're doing basically two nights of this. Friday night at 7.30 uh, is the North American Tour is what we're calling it, of uh, some Americans and Canadians playing Lost Minds Beginners. And then we're doing the British Invasion, which is this group is what we're calling it. Um, but uh, that is our what we're running here right now. Then, like I said, Monday night, uh, Wizards of the Couch Channel, we're doing Satanic Panic at 9 o'clock. Uh, Tuesday night we'll be back here for Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Uh, Wednesday night is Mech 45, Josh's Sanguine Isles. He's back with the group. Um, nothing on Thursday nights until May the 7th, and that's when King Bashman will start up Yawning Portal with the Thursday night boys um, and uh, run them through all the modules. He'll be with that group for quite a while. Those are going to run through all the modules in Yawning Portal. And then back here, like I said, Friday night for Lost Minds. So we're almost getting to a full week of streaming Saturday nights is usually off night, usually for me, or we'll run some Baldur's, I'll play some Baldur's Gate, uh, the original PC game, or we'll do some Jackbox Party, or who knows what else. But we're, with all the time on our hands, hell, that's what we're doing here, streaming. Um, and I somehow, behind my green screen, I'll get back to my miniature painting, but I just haven't had time to get to it. So anyway, uh, folks, that was a great game. You two, you four, go enjoy the rest of your evening and get some sleep. We'll see y'all back here Sunday. That's it, folks. Be good. Take care. We'll talk to you later.